Kanga and Nip are battle forged. You can be steel forged. Make sure you go ahead and pick up the steel forged chest. And that's how I greet you with presents. My name is Tom Battinger. I go by F dot on the internet. That's Dave Olson. He goes by Dave Olson on the internet. And this is the Paladin of the Beer League. <laughs> I go by Dolson on the internet. I'm building a brand new. <laughs> Just kidding. Yes. No, the, the steel forged battle pass was great. Be sure to go out and check it out. Lots of fun to be had there as well. But I am excited about this matchup we have today because, I mean, Kanga won 4-0 yesterday. Yep. I mean, you don't forget it. They had the power of Mike on Navi's side, which, you know, tilts things around. But but NIP went 7-3, and it, it, it wasn't as clean as we've seen NIP in the past. Virtus Pro looked very good, granted, but this will be an interesting matchup. You know what, you know what I did see, though? NIP got cleaner as the match went yeah. on. And so now we're seeing a, a world where NIP are still, you know, in indomitable, still the top of the crop. Kanga's got a large task ahead of them. Kanga's going to be the team up against them. And like you said, some interesting push and pull here. Yeah. Who are the players that you've been looking at the most lately? Uh, on on Kanga's side, it really has to be Chronix and Rhino. Looking at Chronix first, he's the guy who will, who will truly take over the game. Similarly, if you look at like a Renegades, you have Shadow and Vocal. Those guys will pop off sort of regardless of of the situation around them. Chronix is very much sort of in that conversation. He, he, you know, is the recipient of whatever game is going on around him, granted. Sure. But you can always count on him to have these big moments. He plays the Kinesa. He plays the Tyra. He plays the Cassie. I mean, he, he's flexible in what he can play, and he's also very, very good at playing it. <laughs> so you have to be careful, and he's really adapted into this sort of new hit scan DPS meta that we're starting to see where Vivian, Tyra, the extra damage amp is so important. He, he's molded into that so well. He, he's definitely not behind the times in that case. So if there are positions where it makes sense for Kanga to pick up something like the Tyra, something like the Vivian, it's not like an iffy pick for Chronix. He can absolutely adapt into that. As I said, I love how that worked out. You see the Tyra, you see the Vivian. And he's doing well on both of them, so so I look for him to shine today in this matchup. A nice backbone there for the uh, for the Kanga squad. That's been a really big deal. Is just to have comfortable players that you know what you can mm -hmm. expect out of, and that's what Chronix is going to bring every single time. Gera on the other side, a very uh, interesting player in and of his own right. What do you say about this guy? How does he affect the team? And and really, what's the big be what what's the big deal? What's the big deal with Gera? Well, he I draw similarities honestly t to him as like Spunky, sort of in another way. Been playing the game for a long time. He's very adaptable in the healers that he plays. Loves himself some Damba. He can play the Genos. He'll play the Ying if it comes to it. Kanga also really like Furia. So the flexibility is there for Gera. I mean, we don't talk so much about flexibility in the support position because in the past it's sort of been one or the other at any sure. given time. But in the current meta, Fury is viable, Ying's viable, Damba's viable, Genos is viable. So having a support who can play all of those is so important. Gera can do just that. His ultimate timing on the Furia is very good, very important, and then his ultimate aiming and, and his his mentality on champions like a Damba or like a Genos, you know, really the team fight, the CC affecting ultimates, he's very good as that uh, at those as well. And so really what we've seen, I mean, you've just spoken about Gera and Chronix, and one of the common threads that we see with these two players is how wide their champion pool yeah. is. And that's very important because when it comes down to picks and bans, Kanga is going to be something that can really, really utilize the team intelligence factor. True. Um, that they can understand the picks and bans of the game, but also the team prowess factor, the fact that you know, we can kind of play anything you want. Right. So ban out the weird stuff, go right ahead. Uh, we've seen some other teams kind of cornered. That True. won't happen to Kanga. I don't think so, and, and that's that's going to be very important today, especially if you look at NIP and how they've been in the past, and, and even a little bit yesterday in their sure. Game 7, they brought out Ferocity Grover. They they played sort of some vanilla, maybe a little bit of spice thrown in there, but, but bringing out the Grover at the end of the day, that's the NIP that we've seen throughout the entire season. So being flexible, being able to, to make sudden adjustments in these drafts is so important. Kanga's a team that... You know, they've had their struggles, but but flexibility is not one of those struggles. Well, Kanga right now, we'll see if they struggle here versus the top team. Hades is standing by, and Pretty Hair is right there. Thank you so much, gentlemen, down here in the Kanga booth with my main man, Hades. Hades, talk to me about a little bit of yesterday. How did, how the hell did you prepare for Mike? Well, we didn't, act, we didn't actually know that he was going to be playing till fairly close to the game, so we're just preparing as normal, keep, keep practicing, <laughs> keep doing our best. 
Well, thank God you're able to grab the win. What was was there any takeaway from yesterday, or were you guys just kind of having fun, not really showing much? Um, yeah, you'd be surprised how like one player can make a huge impact or as little as impact. So we didn't know what to prepare for, and like I said, it's, we couldn't really learn anything yeah. from it because they're a man down, unfortunately. So we're just still preparing for the game today against Nip. An element that we talked about earlier was when you look at that VP nip set yesterday, seven, really eight games, if you want to get technical with it, there was so much shown and so much that had to be done. Navi really looked like they had VP figured out. Do you guys expect to kind of have the same knowledge on nip going into today? Yeah, it's really interesting to see the difference between how VP do so well one day and then bad the next day. And I think that's because there's a lot of like flexibility with the draft and just one pick can totally throw teams off. So today, if we get that pick and we can just pin it on Nip, we can win. And if not, then Nip are the number one seed at the moment. So they're kind of expected to just do their thing, do the default thing, and we'll see who wins. Hell yeah, man. Love the confidence. We're going to get this one back up to the desk and get ready for the set. Love the mindset here of Kanga. They understand that, listen, we prepared a lot. We know what we're going to do. We're confident in our own right. At the end of the day, if we lose to Nip, Nobody's really going to call the yeah. cops. And I think that is absolutely the right mentality. I agree. Because you can't come in here and go, well, they're number one, so we just lose. But also, I'm just not going to take you seriously if you come in here and go, well, easy for us. It's just ninjas in pajamas. <laughs> so I think the approach that Kanga kind of had here that Hayden yeah. specifically brought was was exactly that and exactly what I want my coach to say. Be like, all right, boys, you know what you can do. We can absolutely win this. But uh, listen, win or lose, we're still getting ice cream. I like this. Look. No, no I, th I think that that's the important way to look at it. They're they're a strong team, and honestly, similarly to like a Virtus Pro, they've they've been flexible. They've shown weeks where they can take some of these top teams. Last week, SSG, they take them to seven games, and then you know they four zero win. I mean, you can throw an asterisk on it if you want. Yesterday, but they come out with the win four zero, yeah. so they're gonna be they're gonna be riding high right now. Nip though. They got the win yesterday, but knowing those guys, they're not going to be happy with the way yesterday <laughs> went. The fact that it went seven games, I know they were sloppy. I mean, you could probably sense a little bit in their post-game interview. They were they were like, yeah, we won, but we made more more mistakes than we're used to making here in this case. And I think they're going to look to build on that today. I mean, you know, absolutely, just to provide some a little bit more on top of what you're saying. I got a chance to talk to Bird yesterday after the games, and I was like, yo, man, GG's. I very rarely talk to players after the yeah. games. It's like kind of their sacred time. But, you know, post-interview, especially with a winner, I was right. like, hey, man, GG's. And he was like, not really. No, like, it wasn't. We are a lot better than that. I said, hey, y'all played well. But like you said, unsatisfied with anything but perfection, I think, is yep. really what this uh, this team is about. And when you look at a, a player like Bird, who's been involved in competitive gaming for so long at this point, I mean, uh, that's no surprise to me. No, and, and I mean, I draw parallels from like Spunky to, to Gare on the opposite side. I mean, I'll throw Bird in the mix as well. He, he performs on all of these champions. The no. Fury is in their back pocket. I I like the Fury very much so on the ninjas and pajama side because it, it really fits in with what we've seen from them, the play style that they enjoy playing in the past. Sort of that sudden go play style is mm -hmm. something that really benefits them. So I expect to see uh, some Fury out of them today maybe. Yeah, nice stuff there. You know, Bird, one of the one of the longer time playing Paladins players, surrounding himself with players like Bittner. Mm. Certainly, uh, <laughs> I don't know how do you how, how do you give this guy his uh, his due because when you average in the six figures, right? I mean, how do you? You can't just say, "Well, this guy's good. This guy's great." Bittner has been one of the premier players this season in the PPL. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit the buzzer again of flexibility, that buzzword that we talk about so often. But but it's Bittner is kind of the epitome of that. Yes. And that you'll have a game where sure he's playing the Knessa. Maybe he'll go on to a Cassie the next game, whatever it may be. Then he gets smacked in the face by a Ferocity Grover the, the last game around. His pip is out of this world. It, he's so hard to lock down in drafts. Because he truly is the most flexible in a meta of flexibility. And, and he plays all of the champions to such a high degree. And, and like you said, it's almost hard to, to do this guy justice because yeah. 100,000 damage averages, I mean, that's pretty <laughs> absurd. I mean, as every single game he's going to be doing six digits. And considering how fast most of their games go, 
being able to average six digits worth of damage, it's crazy to me. That's what I was, I was just going to say. Also, it's NIP who just don't really drop any yeah. maps, so <laughs> they're winning very quickly, and he's still racking up all that damage. Well, we've got an interesting one here because Kanga from Down Under, but Diggy Dog also on the other side. Let's see what he's got to say. Thank you, gentlemen. I'm down here with Young Scrat in the NIP booth. He's here to give uh, his thoughts on today's game with Kanga. Obviously, this is fun every time for you. This is your old team. Do you, do you still feel that, that that kind of energy of playing these guys, or has it been long enough that you've been separated from the Kanga boys? There's definitely some energy between, I would say, probably me and Chronix for sure. Yeah. Uh, Rhino definitely has energy towards me because we both play the same role, but eh, I'm kind of over it now. Talk to me a little bit about yesterday and that, that very, very long set. You, you guys, uh, you know, we talked about with Navi specifically playing VP that they felt very prepared in the draft. It felt like they knew a lot about what VP was going to do, and naturally they were pushed to the limits. Do you guys think Kanga has an opportunity, given how many games you guys had to play and how hard you were pushed, to maybe find some weaknesses and exploit those? I mean, for sure, but I think VP actually had good drafts against us as well, especially in the beginning. Like, we were getting out drafted, I think, pretty hard, so... I think we're going to change some stuff today, so we'll have to wait and see. Kanga are definitely a, a team you guys respect a lot, that they can kind of bring out anything. What are you expecting from them, if anything, that's going to be maybe meta-shaking? Something extremely ag aggressive. Yeah, a lot of aggression here from both sides. NIP versus Kanga. Let's get this one back up to the desk and get it started. That's the type of rivalry I really like, watching that real organic, you know, nobody made this. Diggy Dog just bounced, played in Europe, now <laughs> on the even stage, going right. to be playing against some of his old teammates there. So I'm, I'm eager to watch this one. Also some switch-ups. You, yeah. you, you heard Diggy Dog say, look, man, yeah, we got outdrafted a little bit. Not today. So I want to no see more. some changes. I love, I love the answer. What are you guys going to bring out? And he could have been jokingly, but sort of said something extremely aggressive and then looks into the camera. And, and the thing I love most about that is it could literally be anything. <laughs> literally anything could be so extreme. They could play anything yeah. aggressively. Ruckus. I wouldn't be surprised. Looking at Jaguar Falls map number one, Pip, that jumps into my head. That's something I, 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 I say he, he weightlesses up into my head here in this case. And the, what I always say is if you're going to allow NIP to pick Pip on this map, you need to have a way to deal with it. Otherwise, you need to ban it away because Bittner can single-handedly take a game over. We don't know that they're going to go Pip on this map. But there's no reason not to sure. when it's been working out every single time. Well, the first ban's coming out, and uh, Torvald not banned just yet. Khan, a very acceptable ban. And the Boom King. We see the big round guy banned out here. Hanging out, like you said. Pip is the discussion. Does Kanga want to deal with the pip that is likely to come out from NIP? And that said, would it even be first pick? It mm, maybe. I, this this next ban really, I think, dictates the direction they're going to go. I like the Bomb King ban actually because Evil Eye is not a an unflexible player, but but on this map, one of his better champions is the Bomb King. And that really makes so him uncomfortable. You know, he has Bomb King, he has Eevee. Waiting you kind of throw your hands off to the side. You give, I mean, NIP listen. have picked Torvald listen. every time it's been handed listen. to him. I can listen, listen. Oh, no. oh, no. <laughs> I hope everybody me. watched yesterday's games because it looked like Kanga did it. And NIP went head to head against Virtus Pro, and Virtus Pro lost up. every game that they let Torvald through. Torvald goes through, and it's not that NIP or Torvald specialists, it's just they're the best team, and he's Explosives. one of the best choices. Dash it's Dash really Dash simple Dash on this side of the desk. Well they get the pip as well, that's got a giant danger sign on it, and yeah. uh, I see an exclamation. That with a Genos. <laughs> and right now, NIP, <laughs> do you see the look on Diggy Dog's yeah. face? Uh, everybody's kind and of Alex, just, Alex is feeling it. That He's feeling it. A sm that smile from Alex is about as, as emotionful or emotion as you get out of him. The big <laughs> smile from him. I mean, they should be feeling good. Ash Barrick, I mean, don't get it wrong. That's a very good frontline stack. Great. So much supplemental healing will be coming from this Damba. To your gods. But NIP yesterday dictated cannot. every single game they played when they had Torvald Genos. The pacing was just too fast to be dealt with, and you give Bittner extra damage on the yeah. already damaging Pip. It do, I mean, it, it doesn't bode well off the, off the, the get-go here. Uh, Virtus Pro were able to answer it a little bit with, some, with just some space control. Slowing the game down is sort of the name of the game here for Kanga. 
NIP back on the clock here. They're looking for one more frontliner and one more dedicated damage dealer. Cassie, Maldama, Barrick, and Ash on the other side. I mean, you could get real greedy and go Tyra. <laughs> yeah, actually. I, it's good you mentioned that because she's very good on this map. Bittner is already going to be on the pip. Alex is a good Tyra player. I, I think it would work fine here in this case. And then you have uh, you have an opening for wants. one more. You still have an Anara on your side for a little bit of that extra staying power. I wouldn't mind a Tyra in this case. Yeah. I like the Anara coming out. Tyra and Nara is Any, what I would love to see. Anything else, though, I think is just icing on the cake at this point. I mean, yep. I, I don't think I would dislike... And I mean, I, I hesitate to say that, but there's Lock very the little... Lock the Grok! I would dislike that. <laughs> Just kidding. No, Leon is fine here as well. I mean, when you, you when you build a Torvald Genos run. lineup, I mean, anything really works into <laughs> it at the end of the day. It, 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 I think having some of that long-range guaranteed direct hit scan damage from the Leon is good. Adds a little bit of that extra element. Getting Evil Eye on the Eevee is good as well. That'll make That's Leon a, deal, a little actually. bit more uncomfortable, especially when Bomb King is his, his sort of most comfortable. Eevee is right up there in that conversation. So it's going to be on Evil Eye to, to make Genos or, 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 excuse me, Leon or Pip uncomfortable. Because if he doesn't, they're going to run wild <laughs> and Kang are going to have a hard time. Pip's going to be a real big deal here, I feel, for, for NIP. Still not sold on the Eevee selection just yet. Kang are giving it some thought. Maybe even just preparing for the game as well. I mean... Drogos is an option, but but picking that into a Liana is tough. I mean, any of these mobility, yep. I think Eevee has a little of that extra sudden burst mobility going into the Leon, a little bit harder to hit. Drogos is more of a ever presence up in the sky, which would allow Alex, I think, to uh, to hit that a little more consistently. So I don't mind the Eevee pick. Cassie's good as well. I mean, Kanga have a very good draft on paper. But the problem is that it loses a little bit of value when you look at NIP and what they've allowed NIP to draft. Sure. Because Torvald, Genos, and Pip, that's like their wheelhouse. That's that's the that's the aggressive wheelhouse that, that NIP live in. So not a bad draft from Kanga, but a great draft in my eyes from NIP. Two good drafts, one good game. Let's get it underway. Kanga versus Ninjas in Pajamas. And I guess two average casters, but uh, I guess if you're talking height, you definitely exceed average, Nick. I'm pretty close to you, so I guess I could be above average as well when you really think about it. You're nuts, kid. I'm, not, I'm nuts in so many different ways, and today we got a great game. NIP, Kanga, hard for you to root against the hometown Kangaroos, but how do you feel about their matchup going into this one? I, I just feel like you, you let Tenor get Pip on Jaguar Fall specifically so many times before I, I just start to question it. I've questioned it for a couple of weeks now. When will they learn? He continues to get it. This Kanga lineup, uh, it's strong for sure, but one thing I'm definitely concerned about is they don't have any like on-demand CC immunity alts, things like Enlightenments, Fernando Ultimates, Nara Ultimates, things that can get them out of chickens, yeah. making them overly susceptible to it, and, and you don't want to let Pip snowball you on this map. You've got to rely on like Ice Block if you're the Eevee, really, and that's about it. Maybe the Cassie, and, and that's really where you got to go for. Otherwise, everything's got to be timed so perfectly. Three. Taking a look at the legendaries, the talents, excuse me, here. Interesting choice to go with the Leon. Tyra would have been some crazy damage amp, and she actually would do well with the Torvald bubbling right. her. But I think it's just Tenor's going to be getting so much of this attention from uh, both Bonker and Burr that it's probably not going to be room for the secondary DPS. At the end of the day, Leon was a great way to just finish picking out Evil Eye. They banned Bomb King. Leon is oh, good God. against both Drogos and Eevee, the only remaining blasters, but it doesn't stop Evil Eye from getting the first blood on the bird. Sustained, cut off from NIP. They got to win this one quick if they're going to win it at all. Oh, he waited for that ice block, didn't he? I think he wanted to hop into the doorway so he can get Ooh. a little bit of healing. Nice knock off as well. Huge stuff there. Chronix picks up the final blow. 24% Kanga. Having a bit of a go. There it is. Evil Eye's coming around this corner. Look at that presence with the damage amp from Torvald. It's all good for Alex, baby. He's not happy with his aim as of late, but so far, so good today. And this is really where Tinner wants to be. A lot of room to work with. Left side uncontested. And, of course, people standing in a circle waiting for him to show charge. up. Exactly. It's pretty crazy here. 87%. A few more shots. He'll have that evil mojo, Nick. That's that crazy. can play the pivotal here. He's so far ahead of everybody else. One more shot, and that'll do it. Evil Mojo's ready to go. Watch I out. think NIP start to fall back here. Lol Kanga into a false sense of security and pull the trigger. This is going to be important. Diggy Dog on the Torval. Bonker playing that point tank as well, and he misses! A 
complete whiff. Uh. Oh no, oh no. This is not what they wanted. Kanga now have a beautiful opportunity gifted to them to retake control. <laughs> Never say I didn't do nothing for you, Bonk. We're trying to be over <laughs> Zanara, but Evil Eye's smart. He's played this first team fight very, very patiently. Oh. But it's still two frags for NIP. Oh, and the wall almost hurts them, doesn't it? Because it isolates them next to Evil Eye. This is not what they wanted. 93% to 90. Kanga Esports have fallen. No, there's just the Damba. They're alive. It's going to be NIP who take control yet again, but a bit of a precarious start and a whiff ultimate from Tenor, not something you always see. And, and the scary part is, is that they're still able to win it. That's scary. That. Ice Storm did come out. It did cost Tenor his life, Kanga Esports. Other than that, didn't pull out any other ultimates. Ninjas in pajamas, same story here. A lot of ultimate charge. Pip comps really do like to snowball you. The healing from Pip, the crowd control from Pip. It is all stuff that's hard countered by items later on in the game. So NIP really wants to get this one closed out quickly and set the pace. Two minutes now. That pace is literally being set here. 187 and a Dread Serpent as well. Oh, no. Insult to injury oh, wow. thanks to Jera. Firing that off a bit late. Tinner looking to go down. Rhino trying to finish him off with the healing. It's just too deadly. Joel's with the final blow, but it, it really does look like it's going to be NIP still having control. Nice hyper beam, but it's, <laughs> he has the shoulder bash just in time. He will still have his life claimed, though. Okay, and, and that does consume the Dread Surf. I didn't actually know that the Dread Surf just poofed if the Damba died while I was in flight. I thought it would have just collided with a wall and exploded uh. anyway. It never actually It just popped. poofed? Yeah, it I just guess. poofed. Never even hit anything. It would have actually feared so if it stayed on its trajectory, the, the you know the angle was good from Gara, but it just poofed, kids. And that's a, an unfortunate way for it to go. That's a big ultimate from Kanga Esports. And that is uh it's been two ultimates now not gotten value of. I think Evil Eye has done a good job of forcing that initial cooldown, but remember Pip's playing around two lives, really. The full Moxie heal. And now Eevee, probably the best champion to be able to kind of get that heal off of him and then get back in when he now no longer has to get out of jail free card. A minute left, and the Dome Shield is here. Seismic Crash, he says no problem. Bonker, actually the one under threat now as Joel's trying to find the last hit, but Earthen Guard is going to keep him alive. Oh, oh no. no. That's the that's a perfect example of just one missed shot making the difference. Big bubble from Bonker, from Diggy Dog as well, excuse me. This from NIP has been a great team fight, but it all comes down to that missed shot from Joel. Trying to make this happen, but it's so hard. NIP have not let up the, their foot on the gas, and it seems Seems like this is going to be a 2-0 that has gone quite oddly for the start. A team yeah. usually so efficient in the way that they handle point fights. And that, again, that is what kind of stings the most is because there was there was some things to be fixed there for yep. NIP, and they still got the 2-0. They fixed those things. A lot of what a lot of what it revolves around is again the pip. We talk about his healing falls off, his crowd control falls off. But that's later on. You just physically cannot get those items online quick enough, and that's a little bit of what NIP have banked on here. They dominate teams on Jaguar Falls. 3-0 for Diggy, 8-0 for Alex, 4-2 for Bittner. It's all looking like it's going according to plan. Oh, it certainly is. I mean, it, tell me you can get those stats after round one. I think a lot of teams are taking them because that should seem like a winning combination. Oh, through time and space, Bird claims Chronix. That is how you do it, ladies and gentlemen. Genos using that ascended mind and awareness of the stars to find the early pick oh, no. here on Akanga. And they're still kind of fighting into this. They lose Joel as well. There's not a lot of ultimates online for NIP, but I'll be damned if they didn't make good use of the ones they did have. This man practiced, and maybe yeah, Chronix was caught trying to buy a little bit of cauterize or something a little late, but somehow he was in the line of fire with that through time in space. He's going to go down for the second time here. Tenor, Bonker oh, taking control of their defensive side of Kanga, and it just feels like this one is over before it started. 87% on the objective. It's being contested right now. Sounds like by Barrick. He does go down, and uh, the rest of the uh, cap will Overtime. come through for NIP. Some streaks starting to burn, double digits as Alex and Bird move up towards the 20 streaks. Again, nice. you know, vocally not happy with the way his aim has been, but Alex looks very dialed in today, and that is a recipe for disaster if you're a Kanga Esports fan. Absolutely, and maybe just that lack of uh, complacency has put him in a great position to keep doing what he's doing now, which is absolutely decimating people. Enlightenment midair cannot quite find it, so he's going to back it off. Jarrah's still under pressure, a couple Jeez. of shots, and he's going to find the precision there. Double <laughs> kill for Alex. 24 streak as well, trying to make it 25. He's going to top himself off here. No bartender needed. Bonker finds the last kill. 
and this is looking like a 4-0 for NIB. Boy, does he know how to play with Torval. I'll tell you what, this Leon play is vicious. This is violent. He is diving with reckless abandon into the back line of Kenga Esports. But this is NIP playing to their namesake. This is the aggression. This is just the overwhelming sense of crushing pressure that they put on a team. You can't communicate through Ooh. this. Oh my god. Ninjas here, not doing anything ninja-like at all. Feels like a vanguard of knights charging forward, slamming the flag down in response is Rhino. But the Hyper Beam right back at it. Shoulder Bash just to get near where that Assert Dominance will grant her a few more seconds of life. But this will not last long. And it feels like, Nick, this is just uh, a team that is melting under the pressure from NIP. So far, so good. Even Mojo's it's ready one. over the top stun. But it doesn't matter. Tenor gets what he wants. He gets what he came for. A double kill. See and ya. that might just do it. Oh, it will. Go ahead, hit that emo, big boy. Tenor. And NIP grab victory number one in the first map against Kanga. You know, that's the overwhelming threat that the pit brings, but also the Torval Leon. Not the most traditional combination that we see. We actually saw a good bit of Torvald Zin yesterday, but anyone in the lineup of Paladins will take extra damage. They'll take extra health. It's about how you play around that. Yeah. And you can see Alex is completely capable of making that shift. Even on a backliner like Leon, he's not afraid to get aggressive and use that advantage to leverage his position. Well, let's see what the desk has to say about it. NIP off to a roaring start, already one game ahead. Roaring ahead, and uh, that's what they're doing. They're just roaring ahead. I didn't have anything clever for that one. I'm sorry, <laughs> folks. But 1-0 for Ninjas in pajamas, and they're looking real good. Understatement of the set. Yeah. Well, let me, let me ask you. Shoot. How do you feel about flat entire kit damage amp as well as a shield? I like it. How do you feel about flat percentage damage amp as well as some healing? I really like it. How do you feel about a, a champion that can turn people into chickens and do AoE damage with those damage amps on top of them? Is the player good at the character? How about he's one of the best in the world? How do you feel about that? <laughs> well, now you're talking my language, brother. <laughs> Fantastic stuff out of NIP. <laughs> Just everything that they wanted, they got. I'm looking at three separate players with a single death. And guess what? Bonkar and Bittner have two and three respectively. And, and that, that little bit didn't do enough justice, honestly, to Alex because he was the one who really took this game over. I think what, what Bittner added in this case, of course, good evil mojos, of course, good mobility, a little extra damage. But he jumped in, made everyone from Kanga turn their head, and then you have Alex with the Torvald bubble you can see here, basically being pocketed by the Torvald this game, which is smart. His aim, as Nick pointed out a couple times, has improved. And he, I mean, it's, it's KDA, like 19 and a half. I, he, I think he might have died once or twice in that entire game. Yeah, he, yeah, he died a single time. And it's, it's, it's absurd. So, I mean, we, we talked about how you have to be careful if you're going to give Pip over to to Bittner on Jaguar Falls. Now it's like you have to be careful about giving Torvald over to NIP as well. I mean, there's just too much. Our very own uh, Kawhi Leonard, just all business there as he gets ready for the game. Just uh, no emotion. Like we said, the little crack of a smile when you have... I think Ninjas in Pajamas won that game three picks in. Oh, absolutely. Straight. I mean, and, and that's... That's sort of what I meant when I said if you are going to let NIP get Pip, yes, you have to either you have to have a, an answer to it or you have to to ban it away. On Jaguar Falls, at least, there's some maps where it does doesn't work. But Bittner showed us time and time again that Jaguar Falls he can make you pay if you let him get Pip. And now in this case, it's also, like Torvald and Genos and Pip. Like <laughs> that's really what I was like. Torvald yeah, three Genos. In. I agree. Is just I agree. Oh my goodness. Three picks in. I, I think that one had the writing on the walls. Granted. That's NIP's pick. They yes. wanted to get the win on the board on Jaguar Falls, put their best foot forward, which is smart. Kanga on Frog Isle traditionally has been very good. They've taken, uh, you know, they've taken some of these better teams in the league to the edge here. Chronic's very good on snipers. Neither of them banned out, so both of them on the board. But we have seen teams lean into the, yeah, go ahead, pick a sniper. We're going to double flank you and dive you the entire game. And that's worked out very well as well. So there's definitely different routes that you can play this one. Well, you talked a lot about flexibility for the teams. Frog Isle, one of the more flexible maps. You've True. got some long-range sight, but also you can kind of <clears throat> cheat that by sticking to the road and using those uh, those pillars and, and kind of avoiding the long-range fight. So there are a couple of different approaches here. Khan, the first selection for Kanga. 
We'll see how ninjas in pajamas respond. Torvald is banned this time around. Kanga learned the hard way. And that's going to be the Ash. Hovered first and foremost. And the Inara, like you said, a very Come different on, map. Although we have seen Pip played on Frog Isle before. Yeah. I, uh, I I respect the Ash and the Inara look better. I will fight to Especially when you consider the way the this point is. I mean, there's sort of some of those pillars coming out of the ground, but it's basically this giant bowl where all the damage dealers are going to be hanging up along the backside somewhere around the rim of that bowl. So having the staying power of an Ash and an Inara on the point is so important here for NIP. Having Khan as well is very good for Kanga, but, but that's the direction they're going with this Ashinara is we, we realize where the damage is coming from, how much damage comes in, and you need a champion who can just chill on the point to do that. Anara fits that mold. Barrack will be that yep. player of choice Absolutely. here for Kanga. And I love the Maeve because this is the, the, the opposite of what, what? we usually what? see Standing here. We usually see the, the arms race of the sniper. True. All right, who's going to take Nessa? Who's going to take Strix? And then you respond by going Maeve, Jin, one of these kind of flankers, Eevee. Kanga, though, they select Maeve and they're, they are looking across the way going, we dare you to pick a sniper. Right. No, and that's exactly what it is. I mentioned sort of the... the potential for a double flank. I, I don't know if Kanga will go that route. But with Eevee being banned out, Drogo still is in the in the meta, at least on, on the Virtus Pro side. Fasheko loves himself some Drogos. He, he's viable on this map as well. But yes, like you said, forcing NIP to play into that Maeve. So not only do you have dive potential on the Strix, but the Midnight basically removes Bittner on the Strix from the fight for, you know, the duration of the ultimate. To see Strix picked up here, and Kanga have dictated this, and whether it works out in their favor is 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 interesting. Because, correct me if I'm wrong, I'd rather, if I'm going to get dove by a close-range character, I think I'd rather have the Strix than the Nessa with the ability to switch weapons. Yeah. And so Maeve kind of goes, all right, if you want to pick a sniper... You're better off picking Strix, and that kind of demands that yeah. Kanga get access to Kinesa, the one that they had wanted initially. So not only do they grab the Nessa, but by picking the Maeve first, Kanga have really dictated the way these picks yeah. and bans go just by order of selection. I think that's really impressive. Kanga really trying to put themselves in the best position to tie this one up at 1-1. I, I think the, the thought process is, uh, is definitely accurate in that case. Another thing that we've seen with the snipers is Oftentimes, it can just kind of come down to personal preference in that Strix has immediate front-loaded damage, but Kinesa, if you allow her shot to charge up, does a little bit extra. So so it's sort of that give and take. I know Bittner likes the Strix. The Drogos does come through. So now it's the, the question of can the Maeve use her mobility to get in onto the Strix versus Drogos and... I'm assuming it's going to be Alex on the Drogos and Bittner on the Strix. Can can the Drogos just fly high, fly above, and make life uncomfortable for Knesset? It's, it's more of a, a long-term, constant barrage from the Drogos versus a, the potential for a sudden death, essentially, for the Strix on the side of the Maeve. So, so that's the way I imagine those two duels going. It'll be interesting to watch for sure. I think that Kenga did a great job in the picks and ban they phase. Did. Did. How that will translate to the actual battlefield is a different story, though. What do you think about what Nip have on the other side? I think, I think honestly, both drafts are, are pretty similar. I, I really like the staying power that they have in their front line, so I think both teams honestly drafted very well this time around. Well, it's 1-0 so far. Let's toss it to our fantastic and celebrated casters. Wow, I like that intro right there. Okay. I'm okay to be man. I could kill. get used to this, sweetheart. This is five star treatment. We're, the, we're the chief stew. And we're the chief stew on this yacht. <laughs> it can't be two chief stews. Someone's second stew. I'll be the bosun. I'll be the bosun. But you're too young to be a bosun. I'll show you. I'll show you. <laughs> I've been in yachting for four years. If you see right. below deck Mediterranean, you enjoyed that a lot. If you haven't, you think <laughs> we are crazy. I'm willing to bet crazy. nobody knows. Three, That's a real deep cut. You had to grow up. It's like some, you know, some rock him. <laughs> uh, oh, man. We are deep with the references today. Yep. Deep on Frog Ooh. Isle. Very, very fun. I love the double snipers on Frog Isle. That's something that never really gets old. Love seeing Alex on the Drogos as well, off the Leon. He does as well. One of the most unique players because of that. It's not Blaster, it's not Hitscan guy, it's, you know, Eevee Drogos, maybe Leon. It's like these guys play characters, they don't play roles. Yeah, he's really been great at doing that. And that's that moment. You saw it through Chronix's uh, scope there. He Ooh. had to find pressure on Alex. And if he didn't, Alex is really the 
premier combustible Drogos that we have right now because he does not frog isle almost every single time. You could tell that playbook, uh, that play is in the playbook, and NIP go to it because it just works. Displacement, he gets a lot of knockoff kills. We saw it against Ooh. Envy in the first week, and we're continuing to see it here, just controlling space. Oh. My goodness gracious, the combustible lands, the Domba stun land. From, yeah. I don't even know where the hell bird was, but I just I heard the. And as the snake, the snake bites down, the first payload goes the way of NIP with confidence yet again. After that game one performance, uh -oh. this one hurts. It really does. It really does. Because I think this is a team that could have easily taken a lot more out of NIP. But right now, they're not putting up much of a fight. You can't maybe know whether it was yesterday and not really being tested by that novice sincere team. Or, or yeah. maybe it's just the fact that NIP have really corrected some of the mistakes. There is a lot of dynamic. It's almost like that that double header sort of situation with SSG. There's a lot of like dynamics to break down there. And it depends like which ones are weighing in more heavily than the others. Is it a net wash? Is it a boon for Kanga? Is it a boon yep. for NIP? There's a lot to think about when you look at the sets and the differences in the level of competition between what NIP had to deal with yesterday and what Kanga had to deal with. Well, what Renegades did so well and what I think we've decided here with a minute and 30 going by, it does feel like a double kill finally happening for Evil Eye. has been a long time coming, but how much can he make of it with Rhino finishing off another kill? It'll be enough. That's three in the fight. It seems like NIP have struggled when pressure is upon them. They mentioned the fight that happened against Renegades. Two flankers actually going against them. And that was what put them under pressure. Renegades did the best job against them on this map, actually. And Chronix can... It's tough to play double flank. You really need like that, that type of composition. They would have needed something like an EV as well. Chronix yeah. maybe could swing the Mave. I think it comes down to a little bit of history performances with, with this Kinesa. Chronix has done very well on Frog Isle with his sniper, so wanting to go with what they know, but... Yeah, there's some seriously memorable moments from Tenor on Strix, on Frog Isle this split. Midnight comes out from Evil Eyes. He looks for a couple of kills, but not really coming up with much. Good damage there, but that's some of the burst uh -oh. from the Cap Burglar. He doesn't have a reset now for 14 seconds, so he's without much to do. Jero throws down the Pyre Strike Bomb. We're just going to sidestep it and avoid it. He focuses his attention onto the Sniper. She goes down as well. It's 2-0 for NIP. Kanga Esports not quite putting up that fight. It's Frog Isle. That's tough, man. Early game, two hard crowd control ultimates, two seconds from Seismic, two seconds from Dread Serpent. Both frontliners just hands off the keyboard at do that do point. Do There's do nothing do they can really do there. This is, do we feel like it's an X-Files? Like, zoom in, <laughs> what was going on? And what was funny was it was the first look at him and then the second look at the same player. Side angle into the... But in, wait. But look wait. Again. <laughs> Illuma Tenor, baby. <laughs> he has been a big fi uh, fixture on this map for them. Five and one, Nick. And it uh, doesn't seem to be slowing down. How can they get to the back line? It feels like just Evil Eye can't do it. And Chronix's pressure just, it's got to change if he's going to have a chance to really bridge that line. Yeah, I mean, ideally Maeve gets there. She does manage to get caught two online, so not too far behind in terms of the power curve that raw items are going to provide you. Chronix with the opening shot, Tenor repositions in stealth. Just decides to swap targets to the front lines. This is what he does so well, staying effective. Yeah, and that's the big thing that I feel like Chronix has been oh! firing in. There it is, the player. Oh, it's going to get him. See you later, Sonny. Go ahead and watch the tape and figure out how he did it. Tanner puts him to sleep. The player not going to quite heal. Uh, do enough damage for Evil Eye's heal as well, but NIP styling on Goodness. Kanga. Goodness gracious, from downtown, the snap flare. It's all good, unauthorized use. I want to take a quick look at his loadout here uh, because, flame. you know, he's got a good couple things going for him. Opening up oh, the no. fight with a nice shot, but Chronix puts him in the dirt early. Oh, he needed to hit those. Bird now so there's a way. There were two opportunities, and he missed them. That could have taken down the sustain. There's still a chance here, but the wall comes up and goes down almost immediately. But you've got to get Bird off the battlefield. The Daba here is crucial. He's kind of enabling Alex to keep poking out without too much of a risk of completely dying. Fire Strike comes through. Not do. a lot of impactful ultimates online at the moment to get them back in there. Ash nowhere close enough. Comeback Mechanic does the rest, and Kanga put their first point on the board. That's going to be a huge boon of confidence. They'll at least have two minutes to try to figure things out. But Tenor, like you mentioned, Nick, probably just the most effective Strix I've seen as far as finding consistent damage. It's just such an imp impactful thing when he can go and help with that frontline fight, as Kresnik was talking about a little bit, so important when your damage shows can do it, but then also 
focus down these flankers. Focus down the backline sniper. There's not a person he's ignoring. Fires to hits. The shot misses there. Waiting, Jeez. wanting this Maeve to peek out. She gets the heal. Peeks out with confidence this time. Sees the wings. Evil Eye already gets Alex, though, rotating around. Next on the hit list, looks like it's an R. He's missing a few daggers, man, and these are crucial daggers as well. And a lot of times it doesn't come down to aim, but Maeve is one of those champions that it really can. Yeah, Maeve. Really, really a lot riding on your ability to hit what are very difficult auto attacks, but the ceiling is there. No damage fall off for a flanker. That's valuable because you can be effective from range. You can see these bad boys will fly for a while if you get that angle just right. They hit just as hard as they do from that range as they would right up close. And it's something not a lot of other flanks bring to the table. Midnight now on the ready, and all of Kanga Esports have ultimates except for the Khan. And that's going to be Rhino's job to charge it up in the next few seconds, because they're going to have a decision to make. That almost gets it. He takes the gamble. It pays off big, but he gets punished by Bonker, who finds an easy kill in return on Evil Eye. Plugging away here at the con. A lot of damage coming through, but ultimately doesn't grab the kill. Oh, there it is. A nice one surfed up and not quite slain, but again, so much sustain from this Fury in the early onset here. Not a ton of cauterized threes online in this game, if any, just yet. This Pale of Rolling closer and closer, and it won't quietly go in. And it feels like Tenor's just so much more active. Chronix, I'd love to see what he's looking at because so much of the time we see Chronix not paying attention back to Tenor. There's a headhunter, though, and he finds at least a shot. That's going to do it for Rhino, he finds Bird, another one for Rhino, a triple kill in the fight. Kanga Esports trying to tie it up, and Chronix, he's going to put a bow on that present. It is going to be a 2-2, unless something miraculous happens. A lot of energy comes through in this matchup. A lot of teammates going back at each other. Tenor and Gera. you've got Chronix and Diggy Dog, and the rest of, hell, Kanga Esports at this point, but those two very good friends back in the day, so I'm sure that one stings. You're right. Just a little something special. And that's something they mentioned on Esports Weekly. He kind of brushed off the question when you asked him initially, but we dove back in, and he said, you know, of course, playing against former teammates is something that's important to me, and it's something that I care about, and it's something that, you know, I, I, want, I want to perform. And that's obviously going to be something that's uh, in, in the minds of a lot of these players as well, especially Diggy coming from Kanga. And there's just a lot to unpack here. Yeah, that was a really, really good clip to see because that is one of the more unique elements uh, that Kinesa brings, is that ability to quickly refire for lower damage, but it, having it be enough to finish off the kill. You see, we made a big deal, and we were pretty hyped about it. Tenor can do it, but it's got to be the shot, quick swap, flare across the map. Right. That's tough to do. It it's is. really not that hard to hit a quick follow-up shot with Kinesa. Ripping through with a dragon punch, but the boy is blind. What will he find? Wow. Rhino, and he's not going to get out of there. I wide. can't believe it. Dra a battle shout had to have been used too early. Evil Eye, though, finds two. Gets the Alex kill, and now the dome shield from Joel's. Can he get the rocket boots? No, the fail safe will not activate in 21% now for the ninjas. Tenor trying to peek out and find Evil Eye. Is he going to hit it? He hits one. Evil Eye gets away with the dash, though. And so they're still fighting. Oh. Big head shot, and Chronix is out of the fight as well. And another one on the <laughs> Evil Eye. They just can't poke their heads out without taking half their health. And it's not resulting in kills, but it's demanding a lot of the healer's attention. Tenor is keeping people poked out, meaning sustain is pulled away from the front line. Small little oh. details like this lead to that war of attrition that NIP love to win. Big shot, and there's the big landing. A surf dominance here. Diggy saving that till when it feels like you wish he did not have it. The Tenor on the point. He's getting so aggressive. NIP smell blood in the water, and that's two. It should be three here in just a moment. Misses the easy snipe, but cleans it up with the help of Bird. This is oh, going to be a point fight no. won by NIP, and Gara's going to fall shortly thereafter. Bonker gets the final blow. Two to two on the scoreboard. NIP dominating in that mid fight. 87 is going to climb to 100, and they will go in the offense once more, poking out Stop. some more shots. Let's take a look at the items, though, as we are getting into the later wow. stages here on Frog Isle. A couple of cauterized threes finished up for the side of Kenga Esports. Nobody from NIP has gone into that yet. They've all diverted into things like damage mitigation as well as CC mitigation. And I really appreciate Tenor's focus as the seismic crash comes out and will clean up Joel's. NIP trying to make a big push here and keep it going. They want to end the game. Joel's, uh, excuse me, Tenor focusing on the record to try to get rid of Joel's shield just to one tap, two tap those huge moments where Bear can really buy a lot of time typically, but not with this amount of consistent pressure coming through from NIP. The atomization, it's playing a factor here for them, but as the game is paused and we go back into it, Nick, there's so many other things at play. The ninjas have looked good. They've looked better than I think they did yesterday, at least off the get-go. And uh, I like the way that they're performing here. 30,000 damage ahead is Tenor.
over Chronix. His Strix has been phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, really something that's been difficult to deal with. He's done an incredible job staying involved. The final little, you know, couple kills of that mid fight kind of showed us. I mean, he was up on the objective. Flashbang Joel, who was kind of down in the trenches below their drop, yeah, and and gets the kill there. And you're you're saying to yourself, well, I mean, this is the sniper. This is the guy. It's almost like how we talk about lazy with the point tank, like being able to you know, transition from being on the objective to actually pushing down kills. It's kind of the same thing for Tenor, but he's obviously transitioning from the back line more right. to the objective. Right. All about staying evolved, all about staying effective. This map is a map that can oftentimes lead to snowballs, and it was good on Kanga to tie it back up to two. But when they get into these basically non-fast cap point fights, it seems like NIP just have a better ability to stay within the grasp of kind of cleaning up the fight and eventually making the execution, pushing and finally finishing off Kanga. Is this something lineup specific that's kind of tilting in their favor? Yeah, both these teams have similar-ish lineups until you get down to the Drogos Mave sort yeah. of flanker versus additional backline DPS. Mave is much more hot or cold. Once she gets that opening kill, the map opens up. Right. She can move freely. Until that point, though, she does less than combustible Drogos is going to do at base. Yeah, and I think he's... If he stays alive, I think Drogos is just, he's such a threat. You know, those fire spits, those rockets, any one of them makes such a big difference. A Diggy Dog here buys an early one onto Joel's. Dragon Punch wind it, wound up, and it's Alex looking for a kill. He's going to find the healer. Certainly is. It's a big one to grab. No more sustain. Trapped in a corner. Fire spit does the rest. The kill feed is all red. NIP. Fly. Blame game two. Pretty convincing fashion, but Kanga do get at least a foothold in this set. And they have a little bit more time to play, build some confidence, test what might have worked, and take that into the drawing board for next time because it is two games already in the pocket for an IP. Game three coming up, but I don't feel very confident that Kanga have made any of the adjustments necessary to really contest against this number one seed, who even though pressured yesterday, have not faltered uh, as far as losing except for that one game. It's do or die for them in the, at this point. It's loser's pick. Kanga need to win this next map. Nobody's come back from a 3-0 yet. Well, let's see if they can do it. Let's send it back to the desk and get ready for game three. Turn it up on a Friday, 2-0 so far for uh, Ninjas in Pajamas, the top team performing like the top team. Yep. Really, uh, you know, nothing too out of the ordinary here. When we look across the way and we see the team fighting for it, I mean, Kanga Esports kind of came out a little bit nicer, I think, in this one than in game number mm -hmm. one, but still really dominated. And I, I think you have to look at Bittner in this case is really what drove the game. Alex as well doing some good supplemental damage. But Bittner is what drove the first couple of points for NIP. 14, 4, and 6. Phenomenal game from him. On the opposite side, when Kangor were able to reel it back a little bit, it was because Chronix was starting to get the better of Bittner in a couple of those duels. And Joel's as well. He had 70-something thousand damage in this game. So he was winning some of the duels down in the trenches. But at the end of the day... On, on an even playing field, Bittner is just too good. And when you when you put him on a champion like Strix and you're going to allow him to perform like this, it, it doesn't matter almost how you draft because you, you have to consider just the general outplay element in some of these scenarios. Both just teams had shootability. Right. Both teams had very similar drafts, I think. A little more of the extra staying power, as I said. I mean, we, we, we broke it down a little bit, but what, what you almost can't draft for is somebody like Bittner having a game like he did, and uh, he really took this one over. Well, I, you know, the draft was there. The Mave was yeah. supposed to really deal with it, but 10, 7, and 10. Impressive kills and assists, but when it comes down to it, dying seven times, just Mave had trouble sticking onto the Strix. Right. And so Bittner was able to, well, just be Bittner. And so winds up top of the damage charts, 112,000 player damage here for this guy with a long-range weapon. 2-0, his team sits above Kanga. It's good for his average of uh, six figures. Yeah. He's, keep, he's keeping with it here. <laughs> but as Nick pointed out before we came back, it, it's it's now on to Kanga. I mean, it, we're on to loser's, loser's pick with maps. So, so Kanga will now pick this map. And the last map was their pick as well. It was a 4-2, but with just like a slightly convincing performance in the middle, flanked by domination by NIP on either side. So this is the opportunity for Kanga really to come in and pick a map that they need to perform on. Because again, like Nick said, we've never seen the full reverse sweep. I'm not saying it's impossible, but very unlikely in my eyes. Wouldn't be surprised to maybe see a Warder's Gate. Frozen Guard is good as well. They've performed on this map, a slower map where even if you lose the point, 
you have a huge defensive advantage, which right. which you know buys you some time maybe in that case. So I think Watersgate's a fine pick here, but this is a map where the draft really does kind of dictate the way some of it goes. On Frog Isle, the flexibility is there, and it allows for teams to have totally different drafts. And, you know, on one day this one performs, the other day this day performs. This one, really, there, there's some champion advantages that come into play long range, notably on the defensive end, general AOE, if, you, if you're playing on the point there. So, so this one, I think draft will be very telling. Ash will be the first man out alongside Makoa across the way. Torvald yet to be banned out. Kanga giving it some thought. NIP, of course. I think it's more likely that Kanga bans yeah. <clears throat> something other than the Torvald, and then Nip have to ban it. And if they don't, Kanga gets selection for it. That would be my thought process if I'm looking for the Torvald, that is. Yeah, it's been interesting to see in that, you know, Kanga drafted well, but you haven't really seen what, what you see NIP do is kind of bait. Kanga or the team they're playing against into picking something which opens up so much more for the rest of them. We, we've almost seen Kanga banning so defensively in these cases, like like here with the Torvald. They're like, all right, well, we well, don't want to leave that open. They have first pick. They obviously don't want the Torvald in exactly. this case. So, I mean, that's really what you have to look at. But NIP, even on this, and, and this is an interesting spot for NIP as well, because they can build such a strong base with two picks. Any team can. But, but in, depending on the way the bands go, first pick isn't necessarily the end-all, be-all. You get the one champion that's remaining, and, and you know that's it. You win the draft. So that's where you have to be careful against NIP. If you leave too much good open, sure, they can take advantage of that You know better than most teams in this league. Atlas off the board. Kanga free and clear to pick the con here. I think that's a smart pick. Just get that out of the way. But you know NIP would, would then have the Ash, Barrack, things like that as well. Kanga thinking about it, and this would be the standard first pick, and then we usually see the response of, uh, you know, a Barrack, maybe a Genos here with the Ash Band, mm -hmm. so NIP certainly looking at what Kanga's going to select here. NIP, though, have been okay to, to let the Genos, actually both teams well, really, have been like sort of okay to let the Genos slip a little bit. I know Fury has started to come through on this map a little bit as well, really good ultimate for that point fight. You I think the Inara Barrack, this is like very those. similar to the draft they brought brought we last time with the fighters. the general point power up. just the the staying power and normally you sort of get one or the other you get the anara the other team gets barrack but in this case having an anara who has immense staying power and a barrack who has immense staying power bodes well for them it's, it's really going to be on who kanga draft to counter that to bully out sure. the anara barrack khan is going to be good at doing that Cassie will also be good at blowing up high health targets. Well, one of the nice things here, Frozen Guard, like you said, uh, is a little bit of a slower map. So if you're able to lock down that point mm -hmm. with an Anara and a Barrack, I mean, even though the advantage kind of is there, you're just going to negate any sort of chance right. that, that the enemy has to really retake the point. So I like Nip kind of going outside of the meta. Usually we just see a point tank and an aggro tank. Here we're going to see just two point tanks job down to just lock it right. down. Can't you respond? They're going to look into the Tyra Spirits. and the Maldama to go next to the Khan. So some damage amplification, some good healing as well. And the Tyra on Chronix especially, we saw in some of those pregame highlights, he's very good on the Tyra. And Tyra almost just as much as Cassie. I mean, that's a bit of an exaggeration. But a damage-marked target melts incredibly quickly. Not oh, only yeah. does Tyra have a, a lot of sustained high damage, but the rest of the team can throw their damage into the pot as well. A, a Hunter's-marked Inara is going to die very quickly if she's not able to position herself well. So I think Tyra into the Inara Barrack here is smart. Ying for a little bit of extra burst healing as well. Ying will be locked in here for NIP. Cassie next to it as well. So the Ying brings some burst healing but can be problematic. Where do Kanga go here to answer back to the Ying? I think the Shaolin would be fine as well. I think he he's sort of a, a sustained kind of bird he does a little bit of both depending on the talent that he goes um, if he does the explosive shots he does a little bit more burst damage that could counter out the ying as well fernando oof i i don't hate it but it makes me raise my eyebrows but at the end of the day that's sort of what they're left Your with because what we've seen you. is you'll get 
four front line Major bands Castillo and then, and you know, me. one maybe flex. In this case, having the Fernando or having all four bands front liners, that leaves you literally just the Fernando in this case. With that said, I mean, this is one of the maps that I don't mind the Fernando on yeah, as much. Okay. Again, understanding just how this map works and how you're kind of like inside and outside. Nando can really sit on the point and have a nice look. So if you're going to be forced into the Nando, this might be the map that you forced onto it in. Anara Barrack, double point tanks here for NIP. Some burst healing out of Ying. Yep. Cassie looking for a final DPS dealer. And across the way, we see Whoa. Tyra, Shaolin, Nando, hmm. Damba. Okay. And Amani will be the choice. Protection. What about Amani brings her out here? I think it's the, the ability to control space, notably the point and then, you know, the ensuing hallway fights. The ice bomb, the root that comes from that is so important. And then you can't. Well, I don't know how you would. You can't forget about the dragon that she brings as well. The presence of that, if you are allowed to fly that dragon around unchecked, because, you know, the goal really is in those moments, everyone on the enemy team has to say, all right, we need to blow up this dragon, yeah. then get back to the fight. Because the we've scorpion. seen a flying dragon go into these small, close places and just burn entire teams. So... Even if the dragon dies, though, you, you turn the attention off of your team onto the dragon. So there's lots of things at play with Imani. I think that's a, it's an okay pick, but a, but a good pick from NIP. Well, a fantastic matchup so far. Kanga still struggling to find their first win. I'm going to toss it to the two best casters in the entire industry. Well, I absolutely love how we're getting more and more gassed up, Oh, Nick. no, you don't wow me up. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you never had a caster like me. Uh-huh. And I don't think we've ever had a frozen guard like this. I'm just kidding. We absolutely have. It's 2-0 already for NIP, and they love this map, and they do very well on it. Certainly do, and uh, finally getting to bring back out the Imani. She has been absent for quite a while. Getting to see her on the same team as Cassie as well, notably the first time issue with the Dragon and the Scout and the Permavision getting fixed, so that's all good stuff, and seeing them together is going to make for a very, very powerful mid-range backline. Great job to whoever ever fixed that as well. The whole team involved, it's obviously difficult. You know, you ever introduce a basically pet dragon into a game and that doesn't have one already. There's going to be a lot of interesting interactions. Big shots, though, and the evil line makes it out. Kanga, find the first blood, but Alex, very quick to respond. And it looks like two might shift towards both teams here. So it's a double-double. Still yeah. toiling in trouble here. Nobody can find a true bit of uh, room to breathe in this team fight. It's great to see Alex and, and Bonker staying involved as well. They, they realize we are not the focal point of this fight at the moment. We have to do everything we can to make sure we're putting pressure out as well. Rhino takes down Alex uh -oh. before being slain by Bittner. In and out, in and out we go. Mike's liking what he's seeing here on the screen as he bobs his head going by the boot. What an absolutely just brawl of a of a team fight. This has gone on continuously for the entire minute that they've been going at it. Death's all aboard and no one has backed off, no one has paused, and hardly anyone has stood on the point. But now 39% and counting as we head into kind of the middle of round one. Shield comes up from Barrack. There's the scout ultimate's about to be on the ready, and there's Bonker Seismic. Crash it hits three. Oh, oh Nick, that's bad news. That's gotta be the team fight wrapped up. My made-up statistic, when you pop ultimates first, you have a 100% chance to win that first mid-fight. <laughs> NIP do, and they do. I like that, 100% chance to win. I I've never seen a team lose. lose. That's, a, that's, a great, that's a great line. <laughs> They're nuts. I mean, they really do this well, and I, I don't know why anyone wouldn't. When you get your ult, I, you smoke them if you got them very early on, because you can get yourself that advantage, statistically even speaking. You're in a really good spot. When it comes down to a control ultimate early on, like uh, maybe that evil mojo or that seismic crash, it's even better, especially when you can hit three grouped up targets. Yeah. You're never really quite ready for that first ultimate. I think that's why they're so effective. Yeah, and there's not a lot of time. Really good in uh, mortal, and this is one way to counter out the dragon punch. And I think Tenor knows he's going to back off on the Frostfire climb, but big damage from big game Alex. Toss Rhino in trouble. Nice stun attempt from Gera. It's not going to hit. A little off the mark. Another big shot as well. Gera trying to pursue but realizes it's not worth it. He's going to call it off. 
keep healing up Rhino. They are on the defensive end, so don't want to lose the healer in an over-aggressive temp here. In and out of these fights, everyone from NIP does such a good job when they're not the one being focused, and this is what your casual teammates never do. When you're tanking people up, when you're under pressure, yep. they're just kind of sitting on their hands. But everyone from NIP, if they're not under pressure, you see them just running around with reckless abandon, doing everything in their power to make sure that they get damage and get return kills. That's why you saw so many deaths in that first fight. Yeah. Sure, NIP lose the first blood, but they did not let off the gas, and as a result of that, they were able to bring that fight back in their favor. You can see Bulldozer could maybe come into play for Rhino specifically. Two, a turret, he's got Ying clones to play against, and the Amani Dragon, and it took him 60% of his clip. Is about that every 20 deployable bullets. in the game? Yeah, I think it might be. Literally, I especially any other because they have a Nara wall as well. Yeah, they have I've everything. never seen a better lineup to grab Bulldozer on, so we have to look at the itemization here, see if they've grabbed it early on. No one on the wow. side of Kanga has it. And They'll I understand that. I understand that, but yeah. it's got to be a priority after yeah. round one. They're definitely going to get it. This is where you see the Cot 2s diverted immediately into something else. Evil Eye and Chronix both good at shredding through those deployables. Bonker oh, just man. completely shrugs off that stun. They can't get out. the wall, and now this is interesting. That's basically it. I mean, there's really not a lot of options to be able to get out of uh, Tang Esports base. It finally comes to a different situation here, and Rhino is prepared. He gets the Immortal for at least two members. There's a Dread Serpent, but Rhino's low. I'm not sure if he can get out. Garrett with a Dread Serpent to just buy that oh, time, no. Nick, but he has, and he goes down thanks to Tenor, and the Dragon is here. She Fire will claim what is rightfully hers, and Chronix, oh, denying the effort, says, <laughs> I fought some Dragon too in my lifetime. I'm not scared. Everything hitting the fan here, boys. Every ultimate pop from NIP defensively popped as well for Kanga Esports. And as the dust starts to settle, oh boy. it will be the hold here. Kanga Esports dig in their heels in the snow and the ice, and they fight back against that onslaught. I mean, if only King's Landing could have done that. Whew. Like, would have been a totally different ball game there. Frozen Guard, is it's fire-resistant a little bit. You know, everything's <laughs> frozen over. They got a little bit of that permafrost built up. So they should have befriended the Night King. That would have worked really well for Cersei don't throughout it all. Up. Don't even get me started <laughs> You on don't that. wow me up. You ain't never <laughs> had a king like me. Uh, we never have, and we never will again. <laughs> it's over. Oh, it's I'm moving on. It, you're moving on. That's a fine time. It's a fine thing to move on from, for sure. NIP here. Four, Thought the dragon would three, seal the deal, but not two, every instance one. of a dragon breathing fire solves all of your problems. That's a good uh, piece of advice to take into your real life as well. Kanga Esports noting that there are ways to tackle huge beasts. Chronix, he's the big DPS for them on the Tyra. He's going to be playing with that mark. See how of an impact he, how big of an impact he can have, because he's getting hunted right now as well from Cassie. She wants to make the angle. He's had a really, really good sort of couple of games, couple of weeks with this character. It's been a nice thing for him to add to the repertoire. All those hit scan players looking for something else to play. And again, that's why I want to bring it back to why Alex is so special, because he's had a lot Easy. of things he can play. He can play blasters. He is not hard locked to hit scan. I really like the way they save that Hunter's Mark. Something that Tyra is so good at in general is creating that pressure onto a single target. But what Chronix brings is the decision making and the timing. It's always right when they're not expecting it, right when you really need that burst, and not just throwing it on people to have that vision. It really uses it for lethality. Big shot there as well, forces the ult. That might get it. And it is Rhino there with the flames to find the kill. Not quite enough healing from the Ying ultimate. Bonker making a nice rotation Great to pressure. the objective, and he kills Evil Eye while he's on his way. Shield goes up. Rhino just trying to peel, just trying to buy space for his time. Oh, this is the no. front line's job, and he does it well. His point is, his team is back in control of the point. Yeah. He did lose his life for it, but that is the life of a front line. That's well done. I mean, honestly, that shield not only buys so much time, it, it puts them on the defensive. They don't feel confident rolling. They can't contribute damage, most importantly, to that fight. And it, it's one player essentially killing two, taking two out of the engagement. So great stuff from Rhino. Even though he pays with his life, it was well worth the sacrifice. He can get now in the lead on Frozen Guard. They've got to turn this around. This is a must-win game. And that's a good uh, commander's grab there. Arced up, Seismic crashed out in the mines, in the confined spaces. It's so effective. But Bonker, you got to give this guy a lot of credit. Big Seismic crashes, great rotation, stalling out points, slowing down payloads, walking down squishy targets. He has really, really started to come into his own as a point tank. He's doing math equations as well. Okay, I shoot, I shoot, I shoot Rhino here. Okay, well, actually, no, I just hit three pellets on Kara. Can I finish him off? No, it's going to take two shots. Go back to Rhino. He's the primary tank. He's like, all these quick switches making so many great decisions. It is the glass. It might be the good looks, might be the confidence as well from Bonker, but Diggy Dog, 
even though he's on maybe a, you know, bear or less common. You're right. Bar, you know, it's it's just one of those things that it, this is a, an easy role for him to fill, but he's under pressure right now. And Joel's, you can't take credit away from him. He's done a good job. There it is. You hear the icicle slinging back and forth. Bonker again. <laughs> able to salvage a kill out of this somehow. And none of these fights are really going NIP's way, but it's because of Bonker's presence of mind and how payload-oriented he thinks yeah. that this payload is where it is with a minute and a half burned off the clock. He dies and fights around this payload every single time just to slow it down, and it's really started to add up. I think he really, like we were just mentioning on the barrack, not having that ash this game, Really not the same level of presence that he can have as far as just diving into the back line and getting out. Has to be a little bit more, can, I don't know, patient about how he does attack some of these situations. But You're he's right. on the defensive end now. Physically unable to move like he normally does on his front line. So he does what he can. I think he does a good job of being aggressive on Barrick, but he's limited. Yeah. No, and there's no way to change it. You just Ash has, she just got so much, plus the assert dominance as well. That stun is huge. <laughs> <laughs> that turret almost falls on the Rhino's head. Is that a one-hit KO? It should be. It should be. Yeah. The Goomba stomp from the Barrick <laughs> turret. I love it. Rhino here gets the big game attached to him, so that's six seconds of danger. He's got to back off. The shield comes up. Alex looking for an angle. He's going to find it. Big stun there. Kangira turn it around. Chronix gets knocked back, and Alex will finish that off. That should almost do it. I don't think they have enough here, and definitely not worth gambling ultimate. They're just going to... Get some ult charge, do some damage, get some credits, and that's going to be it. Oh, you run that card, huh, Tenor? Styling. I actually do want to take a loadout, look at his loadout when we get back in the game because things have changed with Imani. I mean, look at that frost bomb. That thing is slow as hell now, and you really have to invest points into that loadout card if you want to get it back to where it was. Right. But with, when he's picking up, you know, Inferno Cannon movement speed, I don't know how much extra room he's got in the loadout. Bonker struggling to fight against Overpower. It's one of the best ultimates in the game for yeah. that reason. Charges quickly, and a big part of why Khan is so impactful. 10 and 3 from Alex here, so he's had a great round again. It's been yeah. two great games from him, and now a third. Chronix and Joel's all investing alongside Evil Eye into Bulldozer. It's going to be huge value. You should see a big oh. discrepancy between the first rounds and this round in terms of the effectiveness of NIP's deployables, which they have. Essentially all four of them. <laughs> all of them. Yeah. Yang clones, Barrack turrets, Monty Dragon, Water Is that a miss? Walls. It is. It is indeed. Verdict's out, and the jury says it's a whiff. There's the illusory <laughs> riff. And the dragon from NIP. And this dragon, I don't think he's going to have as uh, hard a time finding targets. That flame Hello. pretty expansive there. It's going to burn the shield and gets above it as well. He's going to force Joel's into the tunnel. This will be a good decision by Joel's because he minimizes the impact chasing down the front line. Dome shield as well to buy time and space. NIP pushing out from wow. that safety. And it's a full wide Kanga. Huh. A complete DSI there across the board. And NIP now with a chance to push and win. Damn, and they were fighting from the objective the whole time, so there's no time to even talk about it. It's at 97% when the Man. fight ends. NIP with the literally perfect mid-fight to go on the offense with the chance to end Frozen Guard and, historically speaking, end the set if they can get up 3-0. One of the things I wanted to comment on, we didn't get a chance to because of the action at the start of the round, but I'll bring it up now as a Dread Serpent just to stabilize. They're just trying to make sure they don't get wiped here because it is crucial, but unfortunately for NIP, they'll have to take another stab at it in a moment. What happened, Nick, was they actually did the exact same thing last round. They waited to play off an overpower. They didn't commit to anything. But now I was like, you know, if the overpower doesn't hit, what do you do then? Right. It was 67% when that overpower hit in the round before. And so if you miss, which they did, you're in trouble. It can be a really bad situation, especially when you have something like an overpower or a convergence or an evil mojo, something that you group up to follow up on, and then that thing misses, then you're just really poorly positioned for the follow-up that is inevitably coming, that inevitably came for NIP, the illusory rift with the dragon combination. Yeah. Everyone's running scared. Everyone who's already running scared from NIP has 600 HPS coming in when they're taking these fights on these targets that aren't even willing. It's just a bad situation, and that's why you see the fly for nothing. I, it just reminds me of trying to take an international flight that you gotta, you know, you gotta be on, but you know, showing up an hour before your flight leaves, having a couple extra bags, hoping they, you know, don't get full in terms of the luggage, all these variables that, yeah, if it works out, you're min-maxing, but if it doesn't, you don't really have a great backup plan. And that's something that I think Kanga have struggled with here. NIP seem to always have the ability to adjust, um, and so far, Kanga Esports, I will give them credit where credit is due. Great adjustment on the defense. They've kind of slowly chipped their way back, and now we're in the offensive side of NIV. 
Damage dealt charts being led thoroughly at the moment by NIP, but Alex by a margin that is much more than I expected. In the past, Imani has honestly been uncontested in the amount of just poke she's been able to do. Yeah. The nature of splitting ice, the yes. safety of her autos, the range on her autos, the base damage. But it just speaks to, I think, what type of game Alex is having. Yeah. And Tenor is a much easier to focus to just dive that target, right? Yep. You have big game. You don't want to mess with that if you can help it if you're a frontliner. So he has to step up in this situation. Tenor is receiving more of the focus fire in the back line, so it is a big deal for him to pop off. It's just that Fernando running at you with that shield. There's a day of old where he would have probably been guaranteed to kill you there. Planted combo to force Bird away into a uh, position to be a favored piece of quarry there but for Tyra. Bonker trying to back out. It's not really going to turn into anything. <laughs> They've had a couple of moments, though, where that's yeah. been a very big success. His mind is literally always there. You can yeah. see it in the way that even on the defense, he was dying for the objective. Yep. You can tell he's just always kind of thinking it, as soon as a fight starts to look like it's maybe going south a little bit, or if it just opens up and sort of naturally moves away from the payload, a lot of people ignore Anara early on, so Bonker has to find a way, and that's his own, you know, unique way of staying in, uh, objective and of staying involved in these fights, making people pay attention. Frontliners don't have any way to hard taunt their enemies to force them to attack them. They have to do it there on their own. They have to figure out a way to just be such a pain that you want to kill them. Get on the objective. Yeah. Get in somebody's face. Body block a front line. Anything that Bonker can do to stay effective, he has done. 3-3 three, three here, and this is a pivotal moment. It's going to be three games to NIP and set point in the next map unless Kanga can turn this around. It just takes one great play. Maybe an overpower. Maybe Bonker trying to bait it as well. The dragon comes down, so NIP will strike first, and they will force Kanga into a corner. What will they do to respond? Bulldozer's picked up, and that gets the dragon off the table. There it is, 3-3, still fighting tooth and nail. Immortal responds into the seismic crash. Dread Serpent ultimates hitting the wall, but nobody drawing blood. Still no overpower as well, Nick. There's a hunter's mark. Firebomb's going to collapse on the top of it and fall right underneath. There's a crossfire. Bonker could be in trouble. He's becoming predictable now. You know they have to run away from the damage, and no firebomb yet. He's got to find the kill to reset it. Diggy Dog getting low. He goes down. Is that the first kill in this entire team it fight? It is. The first to fall is Diggy Dog ripping Bird to shreds in the Heat Haze. Evil Eye on a 15 streak. There he it wants is. to get his team on the board. Triple for Chronix. There it is. Quadra kill for Chronix. And Kanga immediately, without hesitation, moved to zone. They have to do this. This is something they were not great at yesterday, and they have have to be confident in this zone. Good dismount there. And you can't get this barrack down to 30%. He will get another rocket boots. Diggy smartly might try to use it now, then get pushed back, and then use another one. Holds up with the barricade on the left side, and it's still 69% and counting. Nice patience. He's got time. Six seconds on his next cooldown. Fail safe oh, triggers. It. He gets his rocket boots back. He's going to need him. Continuing to push back this con. So much damage taking. Wow! Head in hands. Can't get back in time. Can't get esports. Get themselves on the board, winning game three, only down one. A very good team fight, learned from their mistakes, didn't rush the overpower, which clearly was something they knew was the win condition. If we use it and lose it, we don't have a chance in this fight. But if we wait, we hold off, we make them use ultimates, we have ways to kind of push and counter engage, especially leaning on what I love to see, the Immortal from Fernando. We don't often see it yeah. in the meta, but one of the best probable counters to a team getting forced upon with that dragon, that exists in the game. Very, very difficult to fight back against. Immortal was used very, very... I gotta give credit to Joel. I think yeah. he did a phenomenal job there with that. Yeah, Rhino, Joel's all completely dominating uh, that last point final really min-maxing those situations. And now Kanga are still in it. Let's send it back to the desk and get ready for game four. Kanga taking this one real, yeah. real, real, real interesting. Now we've got a 2-1 situation, and uh, we got a match. Game, I mean, this is my favorite scoreline, 2-1. This is when things either are officially out of hand on the side of uh, uh, Kanga's side. I, I don't think... Aside from that one game where Navi did it, uh, you come back from a 3-1, especially against NIP. So I, I think Kanga need to win this one as well. Some strong individual performance in, uh, performances in this game is really what, what drove the point home. Of course, the notable quadra kill from Chronix, absurd oh, yeah. there at the end of the game. That shows you the power of not only him, but of Tyra as well. I mean, you, you get the, the hunting party marks, which does an absurd amount of damage. But then the crossfire on top of that... It's basically a high damage Gatling gun just firing away. He played it to a T. 
and, and NIP, it was such a back and forth game. It really just came, honestly, came down to the fact that NIP used their ultimates first at the end of the game there, but they weren't quite as effective. The the dragon was immediately blown up, and that didn't turn enough heads from, from Kanga. They weren't able to even capitalize on the the turn to tension. Sure. And then this is where you see, all right, Kanga, now we have all the ultimates. We're going to take this over. Only 39% for NIP and well-timed, well-executed ultimates from Kanga. Put them back in the driver's seat. Get them win number one. But I still think they need another one on the back of it. I agree. I think we need to see a follow-up win here from Kanga for sure. The Fernando, Evan, pointed out uh, very, very well that it was just a real nice counter to what Amani was trying yeah. to do over there. And then what we saw after the fact was some good stuff as well Agreed. from Kanga, just being able to rotate on the outsides. This was a 3-3 three to three before it was a 4-3. This was a very close one, so NIP were absolutely involved, but Kanga did a good job of keeping them on the outskirts. Bizarre will be map number four. And NIP, uh, I think after yesterday, they're a little tenured on this map because they, they took it to seven against Virtus Pro. Seven games, seven points last time on Bazaar, and they, they just played it very well. It was, it was another example of two teams who are playing the map so well, stuck in a deadlock, and it just came down to a better performance from NIP. Individual plays. There was a attempted flank from, I think it was Fischeko, that got sniffed out from NIP cleaned him up, ended up winning the rest of the game on the back end of it. So I think this is a good pick here from NIP. Again, you have to remember they're now in the driver's seat because right. they lost the last one, so they get to pick this map. So they're dictating where we get to go here. Obviously, um, point presence, front liners are huge on this map, I think. Getting rid of Ash is smart because Diggy Dog can really take games over on that champion. Uh, but I'm, I'm interested to see the direction these teams go this time. Con the first ban, first and foremost. Ash on the other side as well. Notable miss, notable left out so far, Makoa and Torvold. So Nip right now playing to really grab at least one of them. That's what the conversation is yep. right now. And they're going to ban out the Torvold. Just going better safe than sorry. We'll see if Makoa is yep. banned out. Because, so if it Nip has to be. doesn't ban Torvold, Kanga can opt not to ban neither Torvold right. nor Makoa. Right. And leave it so that both teams get one. Nip. Thought about taking that chance, but instead going to play it a little bit safe. I, I still think, I mean, it's weird to even debate, but I still think Kanga go Makoa here in this case because despite having two picks remaining on the back side of it, giving over the, the highest priority frontliner, arguably. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't have any analysis on that because I don't know why. I mean, it, it's not a bad champion i don't it's not a bad champion but giving makoa for free over to nip i mean it could be a throwaway ban in this case that opens up a little bit more for themselves i don't know barrack is still around atlas of course is still so, around so, so I, I guess you notably missing from the ban phase is the atlas right that that's what i, I forget really? the ash really? ash really took Stop atlas's it. place in this case so you ban out fernando which gives over Turn the makoa you, but guarantees you atlas and barrack as well so at at first what was an absurd ban to me at least makes a little bit more sense because if you ban out the makoa you give them the atlas and you only get barrack in return and now the front, the aggro tank selection is a little bit more restricted for Nick. Right. I, 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 you know, I was a doubter at first, but I actually think this Fernando ban makes a little sense. I think just just limiting the pool the time you see is actually banners, okay because run. I mean, really look at it. The the front liners that are high priority in this game Spirit, are all already picked or banned. Down in this case, I think they they agree that they give away the Makoa. And then Atlas Barrick. I mean, Terminus was was around a couple weeks ago. Could come through. Didn't look good at all for Space Station. No. I have to admit. I mean, he's he was there. The reanimates bought some space. But you you're right. You're forcing NIP into a bit of an awkward spot. You play Makoa Inara here essentially. And you pick away the Grover. You know what? I I like this from Kanga actually. I was I was not bought in, but the more we've talked about it and really analyzed the direction that they're going, I, I actually think this is an okay route. Going Grover as well. That's a tank. They're, they're kind of trying to beat NIP at their own game right now. They're they're sitting on the brain throne right now, really like banning <laughs> out and taking some of the selections here. Like I said, NIP 
likely to be forced into two point tanks, which yep. kind of neuters the amount of aggression that they can output, unless they go something really interesting, right? Like right. a triple DPS or, or something. So this is balls and nips court to really kind of be interesting here. Yeah, I don't, uh, I'm not trying to think uh, which which direction they'll go. I mean, Grover, Grover's a good support pick here, honestly, as well, with, with Damba taken you're not really at threat of i mean triple dps is still a thing but taking tyra and knowing they already have the damba the damage amp is very much in nip's favor or excuse me in kanga's favor you at this point torvald's gone here. going in nara yeah. yep. Yep. so they, i mean right i forgot about anara i was, I was like terminated anara okay right well, so anara's still around is that, but you're right so they have to invest NIP, heavily exactly. in point tanks Instead of going some of the more. I forgot a Nara. Kanga gonna lock the Croc? No. Not on this game. <laughs> <laughs> Poor I can't believe I forgot about a Nara. Of course it's gonna be a Nara. It's not gonna be Terminus. Oh, so they uh, they have point presence and then sustained high healing from the Damba. So they're gonna be able to chill out on the point and last a long time. Leon Cassie as well gives you some good hit scan burst. Bomb King Tyra, a, a hunting party. Tyra paired with the Bomb King provides some birth on, or burst. Excuse me on the backside. Atlas Barrack, though, I think that's a good one too. The Grover is sort of where I, I think this hinges for Kanga. I think they have a good four around the Grover if they're able to play around that and not get exploded as a big group because you have to play around the Grover right. to get healed. So, so if the Grover ends up working out and, and not as a detriment, I, I think Kanga actually have a shot at, at going back-to-back -back wins here. I've got to agree. Uh, again, Kanga with some intelligent picks, bans kind of stopped some of the aggression that we saw across the way. We'll see if it's enough to tie this one up. It's 2-1 so far. Let's go to my favorite casters. Oh, Thanks, Tom. I appreciate that, man. Thanks. Gassing us up. <laughs> and now we're getting emotional. Big statistical truth to just... To it actually, that's there's a 100% chance that we are uh -huh. his favorite casters. 100% chance. Well, we're dealing in absolutes here today in the bazaar where you have to haggle the price. With a strange and, and mysterious. <laughs> exactly. And the peppers. And the spice. The delights of life come alive at the bazaar. Join us for a magical adventure. Four. And Makoa, too. Two. And Makoa. A Makoa. A lot making it through here with some weirdness in the bands. It opens up. A weird weirdities. Weirdities. Oddities. <laughs> the sugar and spice here in the draft as well. Oh, it takes it in the melt. bazaar. Gets melted down early. There's a lot of damage he has to be aware of. Amps. Atlas damage. He's a big target. Atlas cannot miss this big fat turtle. He's got to leverage these hooks to get people out of position and around this Grover. Yeah, no doubt about it. 15% here for NIP. Already on the point, but it's really about who can get some early damage here. That's good damage, and that's the first Whoa. blood. My goodness. Nice rotation. Even better bomb placement there onto the big turtle. He's going back into his shell for at least a few seconds. He just hit everything. I mean, at the end of the day, it's that simple diggy dog should know. Better than anyone what the Bomb King can accomplish. Used to play this character religiously when he rocked for Kanka Esports. Ninjas in pajamas. It was close, though. Off to the races. It was a very, very close. One more cannonball, one more bomb. Would have done it either way. They were off to a nice little lead, but Kanka Esports have firmly planted themselves in a position to slow down the reapproach. And this is uh, where things get interesting because I felt that Kanga, except for that last round, which I really liked on Frozen Guard, have been really just... Bad. I mean, not bad. I mean, I don't know what else to say. They're, they don't secure oh. off point fight wins. You know, they let them back in. They give them a chance. Sometimes you can't help it, but, you know, there's yeah. there's a version of an aggressive zone that is a little more do or die, but you almost secure that if you do it right, you will not let them back onto the point. But they've seeded it all over to NIP. Now Alex has a kill. And Kangar are in trouble. Big trouble. This field is going to keep them safe for the time being. Oh, Big boy. fear from Bird. I love to see that. Tenor gets two and slides out with style. Very, very nicely put together by the young gun of NIP. That's why it's just, it's better because of the tenacity. When and it's Bittner. It, it's better when it's Bittner, baby. It's just better, I think, with the tenacity of how NIP play. 
to 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 try and aggressively zone. I think I think it's the it's the moving piece that can definitely shift in the favor of Kanga because they're doing really well on these initial point fights. Diggy getting very very low again. Seems like he's got a lot of focus on the Makoa as he should. As a king bomb gets wound up, Kanga trying to stabilize here. Yeah. All right, well. they will. That is what it is. A lot of ultimates coming out of Kanga to slow down this offense. They make okay progress. They're gonna stagger out Bonker, who throws up the wall. Hard tank to stagger here. And he's just gonna walk it down mid, back to their spawn. He's gonna kill him with the 10 damage sticky. I forget who was telling me this. I think it was Alex that does this. Uh -huh. But he pre in the training range, he just he shoots a pip with King Bomb Bombs until they die from the damage from the stick. The 10 damage. Oh, stick. really? That's so he hilarious. Just hits them up 250 times or whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, that's a good way to train your aim. It's like taking a thousand shots, you know, before a or a hundred shots or whatever before a basketball game. Just kind of gets you in the zone of landing the stickies. Evil Eye's been pretty phenomenal at that in this game so far. He's definitely hit a lot of directs. And that is full damage right there. And that makes a big, big difference. Only 500 if you're a little off. 696 for those, Diggy. Feeling the defensive nature of the BK. I oh, can't hit that one though. That would have been huge. That's a big moment because if you allow NIP to get a footing, get a pick. Dredge anchor. Get another pick. Tenor turns it around. If people keep living with no HP, there is just no way that NIP do not get this conversion. They're so good at maxing that. They're sad. so good at showing up at the very end and spoiling the party. They weren't invited, but now yes. they've got a 2 0 potential and they've rounded the most difficult choke in Bazaar. That is insane. Without a single ultimate, and as you mentioned, the choke's been rounded. Now Tenor's got this great angle on the fight. Sort of sort of stage versus stage here. Both teams having a lot of room to work with. It's just about hitting the shots, but Rhino finds the critical one. It was really good dive by him, and that's the thing Atlas can do. The same way Makoa can. Just kind of walk up to you and say, I don't care what happens right now because I've got a shield and a spin, or I've got a full health reset, and I can go back to my base. 13 seconds now. And it's going to most likely be a defensive hold here. Kanga started off strong. Felt like they would have got the round, but NIP, as always, never count them out until the game's over. This looks like it will quietly come to an end here. No overtime fight for NIP. And Tenor gets cauterized three online after just one round of play. Part of that is, of course, that incredible amount of damage he was able to do. Almost 60,000 in the first round alone, less than six minutes of play. Really, if you, if you factor in the pregame time and this mid-round time, probably less than five minutes of play. So he has set simply a blistering pace here. This was an incredible fear. This one's all brought to you by Bird. Of course, Tenor hits the shots on the crowd control targets. He does what he needs to do, but Tenor, I think Bird finds that angle from very, very far distance away. That was very nicely placed by the Three, most veteran support two, of the game. Kanga Esports here. Trying to continue the fight, which would, if they win this game, put them back level with NIP with maybe three games to go to the side of the set. It would be a very big game for them to win. Well, right would help in their round. Tinner, though, shutting that down as well as Bonker. Well, it just feels like they didn't uh, even get a chance this time around. Uh, oh, man, oh, man. Okay. The aggression pays off. I want to see that replay. <laughs> that is just so Might be much too fast confidence. for you. That is so much confidence to rip that enlightenment across the way after hitting those huge presences as well. This is a very special Leon performance from Tenor. And again, talking about how flexible NIP is, Alex played this earlier. Alex had the Nutty Leon performance. I mean, this is, these two go back and forth. They play what they need to play at the time. I don't know, man. Definitely seems like it's going to be a difficult task for Kanga Esports to come back after that one. There was just so much aggression, and they said, what are you going to do about it? And Kanga had zero answers. You would think that knowing the style of NIP, this would be almost yeah. expected now. The same way we think, oh, Obviously, Jaguar Falls expect the pip. I can't tell. Do you think it's just teams saying we know it's going to happen and we're just we'll try to execute against it and it's hard to do it? I have to. At you have least to think that. You have to. Uh, think. You have to give the benefit of the doubt at that point. Kanga playing well today, but I really this is like special from NIP. Great ultimates from Bird. Walker's playing the objective stupid, stupid well. Diggy Dog got the Koa. That's always a really fun treat. Alex has had really insane games. Tenor is having a special moment here on Bazaar with Leon. And Kangar just, you know, gloves up right now, trying to survive the onslaught. Oh, good, good hit there. Really good 1v1. 
Rhino's a great player, so he feels very confident taking on the likes of Alex and, and Diggy and anyone who shows up because he feels like, it, you know, any champion matchup, he could be successful there. Chronix has found a home on the Tyra. That's where they were able to have a lot of success yeah. previous rounds. Let's take a look at the healing charts, actually. I want to see how this Grover is, is managing to keep up. Damba Nara is, is something that is a very, very tough mountain to climb, a very, very tough healing uh, sort of onslaught to fight against. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I, I, I think if you can group up and fight around Grover effectively, which I think Kenga have done a decent job of, they've drafted a pretty good comp to do it, he's a character that can easily main support. Oh, is so deadly here in his approach. And there's the Dread Serpent. It's a setup. And there's a CC Moon Ultimate Whirlwind to counter it out. Grover trying to bail his team out from any aggression. But Diggy Dog, he wasn't even able to get aggressive. He died earlier. Alex sacrificing his body, putting it on the line. Bird going to slither away. 77 health to his name. And they're not quite giving it up yet because Tenor has a chance. Oh. And he gets Rhino. What can he do from this? He's got Bird pocketing him there. That's the combo. He hits a beautiful enlightened eminence there. And he's still got enlightenment ready to go. A triple kill from Tenor. Oh my god, playing like a god. He is popping right now on Bazaar. This is some of the best Leon play I think we have ever seen. The split second target swap there beautiful. with the presence was absolutely filthy. I mean, it's just such a beautiful display of the power of Leon when you get going. And he had that get out of jail free card with the enlightenment if he wanted to use it, but he hasn't found a lot of reason to. He hasn't been under pressure like that. He's been the one applying pressure. The uh, temporal divide is just not doing enough. And I, I wonder if the deja vu would have been the play. That wall is so crucial for giving Bonker that out. Finally, Evil Eye will collapse and find a kill onto him. It's been so difficult to take down the point tank. And it'll be a 2-2, despite some great moments from Tenor in an IP. This is a tough map to push on, I think, at the end of the day. You really, like, you look at that first round, how they were able to win that entire team fight without losing a soul, without yeah. popping an ultimate, and it still wasn't enough. It was. This is a tough map. It's new, which is part of the reason why it's, it's, I think, a little bit tough for teams to convert on. But at the end of the day, there's just a really sort of nice long, they got cover, they got spawn doors to dip in and out of, a lot of things to play off when you're defending on Bazaar. Incredible play across the board. Five, Defensive four, items now getting three, purchased as well two, after the Cauterize 3 one. for Joel's Evil Eye Tenor as well. The only members to have it at this point. Chronix 3 and 6, so the KD not what he wants, but contributing a lot with that Hunter's Mark and finding at least damage in this fight. Dickie making a rounded kind of push, which is going to pincer Joel's, unfortunately. Rhino, though, finding Tenor, maybe getting a bit aggressive. It's still 2-2. Two -two. Kanga have a chance here. They're going to go for it. They are, and they're going to rip this King Bomb right through beyond the veil. Find a stun on the Diggy. One, two, punch here. Not, aggra not too aggressive. They're going to force him out. Bonker, very objective-minded. They're looking at me. Walls himself in the corner and prevents all of that blood loss on the objective. They've got to get aggressive here on this zone. These bombs did not work last time. NIP are just going to rotate one side. And they may distract on the other side, but they're going to push with so much power, it's going to be impossible. Fighting from the point feels like a dead end with Kanga, but they're going to choose to do it anyways. They are the pros. They are the players. They've got a strategy. Right side is Rhino. He hits a good shot on the Diggy. He is low and a Dread Serpent. you got to feel that's coming soon. you got to you got to start popping ultimates here. Bonker's going to be running out of time here shortly. He gets marked up under the Dome Shield. Bonker the... needs help. Bonker needs ultimates. I, I don't understand. Dread Serpent. Red Serpent not used there. Rhino is just taking them by surprise. Maybe it was the pacing. Maybe they were waiting on the Ancient Rage. It's used <laughs> now, but double kill from Rhino. I mean, that is what it is. It is what it is. Bon Rhino just ran through everybody, actually cool. making plays with Exile. Big Pog to that. Yeah. Locks out Bird from giving any sustain, any control. Walks it down, hits a big shot on the Tenor, then another on the Diggy across the way. Two splintered. A little bit slow off the block. That's something you rarely say about NIP, but Bonker was down there buying a lot of time, and the help just never came. You felt like something was coming. They were waiting Absolutely. for something, and just it just didn't show up. And then Kanga were like, okay, well, let's let's use our ultimates. And Boss Rhino doing a fantastic job. Doesn't have a setback there. Excuse me, the second chance, so he will go down. Tinner with a two-streak. That was a big play as well. Rhino finding Tinner early. It's the second time For sure. he's aggressed onto the main DPS on the Atlas and been fine taking that 1v1. Oh, a couple people feared away. Joel walks into it late, Ouch. penetrating the back line there. Ouch. Tenor plugging and plugging and pinning people to the wall, obliterating target after target. When he's allowed to stay alive, it's a big problem. I think we see why Rhino dove him first.
and it's fine because you have a free dive. I mean, it's even really better than Makoa's unless Makoa has the Ancient Rage, but you get that second chance. You can go so far so quickly, uh, especially when you're on your mount, which is a very interesting thing. That's what it's come down to is just a pick one way or the other. It's been a dredge anchor or a big shot dive from Atlas, which whatever way it goes has been almost dictating the way these mid fights have opened up. I think Kanga did a really good job staying aggressive and pushing their advantage. Bad Ooh. spot for Bonker to be. He goes down without much contest. Uh-oh, Nick, this is dangerous. They just found two, and they are not rounding this corner. They've rounded it. Alex is in trouble. He's going to go down here. He's trying to hide and seek. But I feel like they're going to seek after him very nicely. Have they forgotten about him? They don't know. Alex is hiding in the corner. This could be trouble. Kanga have to be wary of the Cassie coming in from the right side. He's going to roll in. And Chronix finds Alex right when he appears. Absolutely. The moment they Whoa! need it. Three with the Enlightenment. Bittner will not go down without a fight. Oh my goodness gracious. The value from the ultimate of Leon. It's just too much. But there's still 26 seconds left. There's a chance. And Evil Eyes made it out. Diggy's going to go chasing. Huh. He's not going to be chasing waterfalls here. He will find Evil Eye the cane. By 15, 15 seconds, seconds left, remaining. it feels like there may not be a moment for them to touch yet again. Nine. Eight. It'll be they close, though. These gates. It'll you be close. only open these gates on this side of the map if you have the NIP security Two. clearance. He's going to get there. No one from Kanga does. <gasps> Barrack blown up immediately. Wow. Quietly into that good night. We move on to a 3-3 in Bazaar, something we do very often. I don't know if it's because it's the new map and... That's just the way the new maps sort of go. It's it's a little, you know, it's this a little was, messy. It's a little bloody, but you get some damn good team fights out of it. Dude, this is what when you know we tested this map for a long time. It was like always three threes. That was kind of the thing about it's hard this to map. Push. It is a very hard map to push, and uh, you know, looking at last yesterday's team fights and uh, looking at these team fights here, it's just inches. But there is an equal dynamic of strength between both of these teams. The way these gates work, there's the pick right there. I mean, Rhino, if you do that every round, three, it's a done deal. Two, yeah, top three in the league for sure. Phoenix, he and Diggy Dog, I think, have shown really, really a cut above on Atlas. Uh, because everyone can do the base kit okay, but I think those three players know so how lethal. to get aggressive, yeah. know how to use Exile well, and win team fights with that very, very kind of unique control. And that was rough, because he missed everything at that point, has a second chance without it, without a shield. He's got 17 seconds. We don't talk about the negatives, we talk about the big shield, but he's got now an extra cooldown. And can he last? Bonker getting low, though, and they haven't made him all go down, and that just hurts to see, isn't it? Evil Eye finds Diggy, though, Nick. Really, really needs to hit these. A lot of people stacked up, line them up, knock them down. That's what Tenor has been doing all day so effectively. Bird hits a big oh, no. fear to bail Bonker out and keep his team alive. Everyone making it out with inches of health and just barely being able to reset. And NIP are in firm, firm control of the point now, able to push away and push back Kanga Esports, trying to make a 3-2 lead here. But Kanga are still fighting. That means they still have a chance. And here's the King Bomb, Evil Eye. Oh, he gets some speed there. He gets a big stun, but he pops out of it with Earthen Guard. Perfect DR from Bonker, just to take that one on the chin. Continuing to fight on the objective, uh -oh. but NIP are running out of gas. Diggy, the last left alive. It might be the full clean sweep here, but Kanga still have a large mountain to climb. And they have to zone. Nick, they've clean swept in IP here. They have to push and not allow them to touch the point. They've got exiles. I don't see a reason why this shouldn't happen. They've got a full map wide shield. So Chronic's getting a little more aggressive, watching it like a hawk. But there's Zix. He's going to give an IP vision. Exile popped. Who's it going to find? So far, nobody. Two shots missed. One more in the tank. Nobody dead just yet. Rhino looking uh -oh. for a target, but he's in uh -oh. trouble. He is in trouble, Nick. And there it is. Tenor. He gets the spray. He feels like it's done, but Diggy Dog hooks him back. Will Rhino go down? Tenor now. Ooh. No eyes on him and he's just gonna free fire Ooh. Alex picks up the kill and evil eye oh boy the king bomb self implodes and NIP look boys to take this game oh, oh tenor tenor winner winner chicken dinner here as well NIP it's not gonna close the set but what a war and <laughs> you earned that one buddy deep breath wipe off the brow an absolute Slobber knocker on Bazaar. I love this map. It's been so much fun to watch ever since it came into rotation. The turn of events after that spray. You can see it. Look at him. It's he goes in, he's an easy kill. Yeah. And Diggy hooks him away. They find the kill on Rhino. 
he knows that's a missed opportunity. I love it. I love catching those moments on camera. It's, it's almost impossible to predict that type of stuff, but you, you just saw the, the anchor like almost burst through his chest like alien style <laughs> and pull him away to safety. I mean, Diggy <laughs> Dog throws it, throws it the peace sign. He knows that was a big moment. Keeping Tenor alive there, Tenor goes on to kill two more people. Listen, he's like halfway through his quarter turn to yeah. fire. <laughs> Do you think if he doesn't spray... He maybe completes the <laughs> I half. Court. I, I know. know you'll never say yes because you, it's not how you go, but I'm just, it's interesting because it was so close. Yeah. And he was like, two health. <laughs> Let's send it back to the desk, get their thoughts on a game that surprisingly, after the start of it, goes the way of NIP. I mean, at the last minute, NIP just remind themselves, oh, yeah, it's us. <laughs> and they do, they, they do the right. damn thing. That's really, right. it, that's, that's how emphatically I'm going to say it because that's how emphatically we saw this win come. Right at the end, Bittner just wills this victory onto his side. It's a good way of putting it. This was a, a Bittner just willing. I mean, Diggy Dog had a good game on the Makoa. Yeah. And, and and Rhino had a great game on the Atlas. You don't yep. get to see Rhino on the Atlas much anymore. He adapted so well to this champion actually. So I think you know, the more I look at it, you know, the 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 jury in my eyes is still sort of out on that last Fernando ban. It it opened the door for and Nara on the opposite side, but it also opened the door for Rhino to play the Atlas, which I think was very important, and, and honestly, a lot of the reason they were still in that game. But Bittner this time around on the Leon, 14-9 and 21, took this game over. The healing was good, actually, from, from the Grover. I thought the way that Kanga played this sort of grouped up, you can sort of see here that they're all trying to hang around, get as much healing in as possible. It worked out very well for them, uh, but, but Bittner just time and time and time again took these fights over. 146,000 damage. Sometimes you just, you just can't beat that. He had a, a triple enlightenment to, to help uh, push that payload in to set them up for a successful uh, point capture to win the game. Sometimes the, the, the un... The unanalyzable is just a player popping off a triple kill here. 3v1, he wins it. You can't plan for that sort of stuff. That's the X factor, man. That's really the craziness that you, like you said, you can't plan for it. Just it happens when it happens. And that's exactly yep. what went down here. And uh, Diggy Dog kind of digging deep and bopping hard going up against some X teammates here. That's right. Trying to really just turn up the screws. So, uh, it's an uh, emotional matchup between old friends. You know, no no toxicity in the air, but but it's the, the same sort of thing. Like, you, you leave a team, you're still friends with the people on the opposite side, but kind of low-key deep down, like, you want to beat them. You no, want to say, I, I'm on the opposite team, I want I, to beat them. I you know? hate the Smite casters now. I'm on what? this team now. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so this is, uh, that's, that's how team rivalries right. work. Yeah. No, that's right. We had that on the podcast on Monday, last I'm week. I'm going to we... hate you. We don't have anything on Monday. So. I do. Uh, well, you can hate me any day of the week, but uh, today you're on my team, and that's what's important. There but it is. That's that's what you you got to look at the three one though two two would have wouldn't it? This is why I love two ones. I, I no, want to spread you're, the good word of two ones to everyone because two two right. feels so different in this case. It does, from through, especially with how. First of all, with bizarre, I don't know why we keep getting these crazy seven point. Like bloodbaths, I it, think, time and time again. I honestly think because with bizarre, there are so many, there are so many entrances to that middle yeah. point. Getting to that middle point can be tough, but once you're there, you can fan out, you can approach from the sides, you can approach from the back, even just storm in through the front. Right. So it's a I tactical the, nightmare yeah. to play against. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's there's a lot of spots to kind of protect from. Right, and and but it, it's oh, it's so much fun to watch those games, but but now you almost have to worry if you're on the Kanga side. I mean, that was like, that was all the gas maybe they had left in the tank. If they win that, if this is 2-2, they have the momentum. You know, maybe the eyebrows get raised. They, they have a shot, I think, at maybe taking one one more map, given that it's their map pick. I might like to see Warder's Gate. It might have been banned, actually. If, if NIP, you know, took some notes, they would know that Kanga really liked Warder's Gate, so that could be banned out. Uh, the... I don't know. I still think there's a chance for maybe one more Kanga map, but at the end of the day, a full three-map sweep against NIP, my money is not in that corner. That would certainly raise the eyebrows. I can't raise them any higher than I am right now. <laughs> I can't either. I've had the raise since high. you mentioned that. But to see the full comeback, like we said, we haven't seen it at all here in no. the Paladins Pro League. We are 12 weeks into a 13-week We saw phase. a 3-1. Yeah, close. But, uh, but no cigar. No cigar. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah, all right. We're we're on the the synergy wavelength. We did see, 
We did see two fist bumps in one segment. We're doing something right, I think, if we can do that. Well, it's that, it's that team <laughs> synergy. And, that's you know, right. when you look at what NIP is able to do, I think that's a big deal about yeah. their approach to the game. Because we can talk about a lot of different things, but I think one of the fantastic variables here is that their players have been playing the game for a long True. time. Diggy Dog, number of True. years. Bird, one of the original. I mean, was playing different games in transition here uh, at the very, very early stage of the Paladins. Right. And so they played around the league with different players and now have been on this nip roster here for a moment or two and I think that's a big part of what allows them to be so dominant and sit up on top. And that's been sort of the rise of, of where Kanga started to come out of the the woodwork I guess you could say. They had a tough start because their start was their team scrimming together for like two days so yeah. now you've seen the culmination of a lot of practice nearly taking down NIP in that one. Taking some of these sets the distance I mean Against a, a hobbled Navi yesterday, granted, but take the 4-0, take SSG to seven games. So this is much to the same that, that NIP is. Kanga are now finally hitting their kind of mid-season form. They've had 12 weeks where, where they've been able to play as a team, practice as a team, uh, and things have been looking good. So they do ban at Warders Gate, so it's not going to come out here. I think that's a smart ban, smart map ban from NIP, because this is right where, if not earlier, Kanga, I think, would have brought that one out. But Fish Market, that throws some some interesting wrenches into the mix as well. Fish Market. Mm -hmm. Good morning, players. Torvold going to be banned out here by Kanga. NIP looking to respond with the Makoa. It is what it is. The meta has returned here in game number five. And we'll see if it goes into Nip's favor. Some more bans along the way. And I, I think... Kanga do not like playing against Diggy Dog's Ash, which is, I mean, she's a good champion anyway, but Diggy Dog is incredible on the Ash. Similarly to how Rhino is so good on the Atlas, I think NIP are probably going to go that route, whereas Mako and Torvald are just kind of blanket bands. I think, you know, the last two are kind of more looking at the, the frontliner on the opposite side. So Ash getting banned out, I think, is directed at Diggy Dog. Atlas, uh, that, that's more of a standard ban as well, For but sure. sort of two-pronged in the sense that Rhino is so good on the Atlas that it makes a little bit more sense there. Of course, big First guy, little head. First pick, there it is, Khan, big guy, little head. Barrack, little guy, big shield. Oh, NIP, going to pair the Barrack up with Genos. You haven't seen a lot of Genos today. Big guy, big gun. There's really nothing else to say there. He's got big heels. The biggest deal about Genos, obviously, is the fact that he can uh, ignore line of sight, LOS. Yep. Right? That's a really big deal when it comes down to the heels. So Kanga looking to respond to the Barrack and the Genos. As you mentioned, Genos has not had as much prominence in this match that we've yeah. seen in the matches around lately. It's been it's been a lot of, you know, Damba. At least one week. Yeah. At least one week. <laughs> It's been a lot of. Uh, it's been. It's been. It's been a lot of Damba. It's been a lot of. Uh, Evie though, Cassie coming out as well. That one like flew. That one is still over my head. It is like Cassie. It, it is so far. It's been. It's. it's no. It's, no. No. B and L. No B and L. No. Oh my goodness. We will educate Way no. this man. Way no. We will educate this man. Cassie right now thinking about China trying out the Chinese chicken as she brings that her one. hawk to the battlefield. There it goes. We'll see how NIP deals across the way. Production is just in my brain right now. Yeah, I know. I'm I know. trying to well, work with it. You guys are you guys are more synergistic, I think. Uh, than, well, it's the, than it, you it's and the I team. Right it, it's the team. <laughs> it's let's, the team let's, right. let's, let's return to the team picks and bands here. Khan, Evie, Cassie. Three choices here for Kanga locked in. As Ninjas in pajamas yes. get a little oh, bit I. spicy. Barrack and Genos mixed with uh, Big Boy Jin. And game, he'll go side by side die. with Leon. You know no what I love about this nip comp uh, uh, composition so far? No, but I think you're going to tell me. They have two characters with five letters and two characters with four letters in their names. That's some real good synergy there. You know, you're right. Kanga have the ability to answer back. They have two four-letter champions, and one six-letter champion on the opposite side. That's tough. I do like, I love them going back to Leon for Bittner. And then yesterday, the Zen worked out mm -hmm. so well for Alex. And, you know, we talk about how the Billow nerf is really what hits Zen and why he's not coming through as much. But if you play in a way that doesn't make you Billow quite as much, I mean, sure. it's a big hit to his kit, don't get me wrong. But, but if you 
play a little smarter, avoid having to billow quite as much. I mean, it's still the same old Zen at the end of the day. Still the especially, damage is still there. Right, exactly, especially with the damage at his back. So I think getting Alex on a champion he performed on yesterday, getting Bittner on a champion that went absolutely crazy on Bazaar is a good draft. Backing it with a Barrack as well is smart. Getting Joel's onto the Inara, that's tried and true. Con uh, for Rhino as well. Tried and true. And then the Damba for some good Pray total top to, to bottom God. hearing. I mean, very vanilla lineup this here from Kanga. But what I see are a lot of comfort picks. You're going to have Evil Eye on the Eevee, Chronix on the Cassie. This is just going to be them trying just to, to straight up outplay NIP, I think, with, with the lineup that they've gotten. Ninjas looking for one more selection. Bound to be a tank. An aggressive one at that. Uh, it could be the, not the Ash, not the Khan, not the Atlas. Uh, again, could be the Terminus. No. <laughs> I will forever root for it's, Terminus and Grok. It'll either be, I mean, it could be triple DPS. They That's could go, saying, they could go Tyra. Spot. Uh, could go Fernando. Fernando hasn't been horrible. They're obviously thinking... Tyra or Nando is the question, I think. I think that's that's sort of where my mind goes. If you get Tyra, double damage amp, triple DPS. Ruckus as well. Well, I mean, does does NIP bring the noise? Let's make this They don't bring the Ruckus. All right, so that wasn't one of my options. But, okay, so Bittner's going to be on the pip. I think Alex is still going to be on the Zin. Interesting. And then... Diggy Dog goes to the Leon, I, is my guess. But I think this is NIP. They just want to seal the deal here. Yeah. They have an offensive-minded team. They have a, a ridiculous offensive-minded composition here. And I think they make it work. I mean, Eevee is going to, you know, try to lean on that mobility to avoid some of the damage that Leon is bringing. But with such a point-oriented map where all of the action exactly. goes. There's so little staying power for a lot of the tanks in this matchup. Triple DPS is going to be hard to stay alive against. It's going to be very interesting, especially when you look at what Pip does where he's DPS plus, right? right. Very utility-oriented. Right. And so a lot of what he's going to do is going to be kind of really just interesting. Right now it's 3-1 in the favor of Ninjas in Pajamas. We are going to throw to everybody's favorite commentators, Evan Rain Day Rainer and Nick Pretty Hair Keo. Well, Fish Market, you know what I say about this one. Uh -oh. It's where teams go to lose. And it's Kanga. And it's Kanga. In fact, one of the teams may be the team that actually coined that phrase. Probably. Because uh, that game seven, I believe, that, that, uh, that was a rough one. Still probably my favorite set of all time. Has to be. That was a that Torvald, really fun That one. Torvald Hyper Beam, though. <laughs> I definitely think, yeah, Kanka QG was basically probably the best outside of. There's been a few. There's That's been, what old man Hayes was still on the point. There's been Navi Nocturnes. There's been Envy, SSG. And there's been really Kanga QG, which Dreamhack Valencia 2017 pretty much took the cake for a long time. It's where they lost here to the Chinese team, which. Well, I wish them well. I don't know where the heck they are, but <laughs> <laughs> hope they're doing fine. Still fragging somewhere. Sha Sha somewhere. Sha Sha. And what was the other one? Oh, forget. I can't either. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to offend anyone by it's butchering right. a name. Exactly. <laughs> Probably best that we stop there. Buck and Resonance Ying will yep. forever live in our hearts. Oh, man. What a time. What a time. Excited to see some Zen, though. I, you know, Alex played a lot of this character the early onset pre nerf kind of found a way. You know, it wasn't the most crippling nerf in the way that I don't think that Barrack buff was, like, that insane either. Right. Neither seem to have had quite the impact. Some of the best can still find a way to do it. That's why you still see the Drogos. That's why you still see the Andros from time to time. Some guys just have such rapport on certain characters that it's almost impossible for them to just let it go. And that's uh, feeling like Tenor here on the pip. Early impossible games. to let this go. And why would you? When it's this good, this successful, the rocket jumps just kind of a part of his repertoire, but not something we Ooh. constantly see. Trying to get the evil mojo off, that would have been a huge advantage, but he dies beforehand. He got exploded there. I mean, he was a little bit healthy there for a second. Chronix is popping from the top ropes. Nobody to pressure him as well. This is fish in a literal market. <laughs> and a market barrel cosplay going on right here. I like it. This is a great lineup for this map. I know there's a lot of mobility for Pit, but it's not the same as Eevee. And she is going to do better on this map in zones uh, as far as being able to get in and get out to touch the point. And Chronix on Cassie. 
Well, speak of that classic set, yeah, that's no where kidding. he really, really stood out on Ice Mines, and he's one of the most dangerous to do it when he gets rolling. Yeah, it is, uh, that is very, very true. Very, very good moments for sure. Loved it all. First couple of kills are going to go oh, this way. Now he gets it off. Missed the first shot. Lucky. Still enough. Diggy Dog on the Leon. Hold the phone. Yeah, wait. Have we talked about this yet? No, not really. That's big change bad, there. Chat. <laughs> big, big adjustment here because they have gone for the triple DPS, essentially. Yeah. They are uh, a, They are having Diggy Dog, the off tank, now playing DPS. <laughs> but this is kind of more of where he usually was. Yeah. This is what he played for Kanga. Uh, not necessarily hit scan, this but roll, right. that's the way that NIPR, everyone who's ever played DPS has officially played Leon at this point for <laughs> NIP. Alex played it, Tenor played it, Diggy Dogs grabbed it. I wonder if Bird and Bonker have a Leon in the back pocket that they're saving for a rainy day. And this is where I think the general, the overall mobility and movement from NIP will start to really work in their favor on these offensive zones or on these uh, moments where they have to maybe retake. Not individually, I think Eevee still takes the cake over any character in here as far as mobility, but as a whole, you've got a lot of champions that can get places a lot faster than the Inara, than the Damba, and uh, even the Khan. Well, plugging away at this Khan shield and then sliding in with confidence, Sticky Dog takes that kill. Jeez. Find himself a double. This is one, it was very close, right? It, it's. Ooh. Tenor grouped up to give everyone that big splash hill, and that felt like it was something that was called for. But again, 100% win rate with the first round ultimates when you pop them first. It's tough to really like know that Gera had his first Dread Serpent ready to go, yeah. but he did. They called out to group to heal, and they were punished heavily for it. And IP lost because of that play. I know the phrase is, you know, smoke them if you got them. You use that appropriately, but. I feel like it's also just fine to say ult him if you got him, because if you got your ults, ult them, baby. Use them. And if you can, you will most likely have that statistic that Nick created in your favor, which, you know, as many nick statistics in your favor as possible, that will, that will set you up for success. I'm not a big stats guy at the end of the day, but I do like to kind of like think about little things like that, like little things you notice that yeah. are impossible to track. They're not tracked in game on any type of scoreboard. It takes a special adventurer, a special man. Well, with, those are the nicktistics. With skills. Yeah. And talents. Yeet. Don't yeah. wind me up. <laughs> I've been wound up enough today. <laughs> oh, man. Diggy Dog as well. You would have thought maybe this would ring. Statistics. I don't know. Nicktistics is fine. I feel like that it's actually a, flows a little better, it's but a it's a 55 oh, okay. 45 split either way. You, yeah, it's 55 way 45. Lean, I, I don't think it's Three, drastically two, better, but I do appreciate one. seeing the other side of the coin there. I wish we had like a little. Who's that dude in football that like they just like bring up in a little box sometime just to like give some. Con is it Bear or something? Is it I like don't. Bear or something? I yeah. don't know. We need a Steve Blake Jabby NBA ruling Blake to bring him up. That. Yeah. We, need, we need that. Yeah, the we, referee guy yeah. from the NBA. Blake needs his own little <laughs> box that he can just pop in on for his commentary because it does add a ton. It does. You you know, that's a great change for, for Split 2, and I'm sure Blake would be available for it. Just bring in that box. Kind of crazy team fight there, Blake. Something. And then Blake just has some color commentary. What the heck? What the heck? What is Tinner doing? It's... <laughs> Holy mo it's, like, it's the get movie on the point, knowledge. dude! It's the movie knowledge, the puns, Jeez. the great jokes. I had to, because a lot of times they're so good that you can't just let them go by, but well, you we don't all feel say like them. you're stealing them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You always got to give credit, but we say these things like like stanistics, and they're like, why is he saying that? Like, who's he talking to? Yeah, that's one of those Blake. moments. Anywho, team fight happening here, and uh, it could go either way. Big old seismic crash wound it up in the follow through there. Snap Dread Serpent as well. Kanga looks like they're primed to win another. And, uh. Oh, man, oh, missed no. time there. Tried to go for the evil mojo. Gets a good heal onto the Enlightenment. The wall comes up as well. Over time ticking away, this is an interesting one because Joel's is in the threat zone, but not with a battle shout. Tinner can't stand on the point. This was slowly but surely tilting the way of Kanga yet again. Nice try on the bird, but the stellar wind will get him out of trouble now. 218 for this offense. 
first one did fine home. Oh, good shots. Honestly, the first one was, it almost looked like a comeback mechanic round where NIP just sort of sat on Kanga's side of the court and didn't let them pass go. Yeah. Now, Kanga off to the races, have a little bit more going for them, but still need to break this corner that they failed to last round. They really need to get Tenor off the point, because not only is he really doing so much damage, he's got the self-healing, he's got the bailout, and he's also getting a lot of the pocket healing as well. This is a huge moment right here. They've got to get Tenor. Evil Eye needs to take it into his hands, or it's got to be Chronix, but as the payload moves, they need to get rid of this threat and sustain. Diggy Dog happy to stay in the back line, but Joel's and Rhino pick up some crucial ones. Tenor goes down. Evil Eye takes down Alex, and now he gets another Kanga. They are pushing forward here. This could be the breaking of the curse. If they win here, I think I've got to stop saying it. Oh, man. That would be a hell of a way to end it. Cresting <laughs> the hill with a lot of ultimates in hand. Seismic Crash, Overpower, Ice Storm, Dread Serpent is there, and 2%. I mean, I think they're going for it. I think they are. Why not? Look at how low Barrick is. Bonker, he's going to go down soon. Triple DPS composition. The thing that kind of tilts in their favor is the sustain on the side of Kanga. And that's what you need at this bowl. And there's just no way to get around it. Beautiful scenery, but all Bird gets to see is his base. As they send him back, and it's 3-1. to one. Well, the, the teams who go to lose at Fish Market now might go there to win. And they uh, and they didn't use a damn thing for it. Kanga still have all of those resources available. Evil Eye having a good game, and, and it kind of comes down to this. Some days, Enemy Evil Eye and Chronix can look a little absent, but yep. this game of this set Point is not that way. Chronix is having himself a day on Cassie. Eight and four in that round. Took them a little bit of time to get warmed up, but now they're starting to roll. I like the Terminus spray down Five, there. Four, three, Terminus, what does that say? You, you have, have been, been crushed. crushed. Oh, okay. All right. I'm sure you're probably not wrong. There's some context to that, but you're right. You could apply it to a lot of generalities that Terminus After you would be involved in. Yeah. That's the name of that talent, right? Yeah. Crush. Yeah. Two second stun. I guess so. You spray, wait out the stun, and then smack him. Yeah. A lot easier to say. There's say some that room there. <laughs> you've been shatterfalled, you know. I yeah, guess, I guess you're right. I guess that might have been just the easier way. Big Evil Mojo, but it's at a bad angle. Evil Eye picks up Diggy Dog with a trade, but Diggy gets Chronix down, and Chronix has been huge. That e that potion will miss. Whoa. The heal will not come up, and through time and space for Bird, he's been deadly on these sometimes. This is a good angle. He might be trying to find it, but Alex picks up a crucial one onto the Inara, and they've got to fall back on Kanga. Thank goodness that commander's grab missed on the tenor, and, and they sort of traded places low ground to high ground, high ground to low ground. Overpower connects, though. That one's oh. not going to miss. They throw tenor off the map with haste. Comeback mechanic. Overtime. More ticks going to do it. Can they get there in time? Yes. It's over time here and they're waiting for Anara. She might get there, but body blocks are important. But they got Evil Eye. I think that's that's really the key here. And this is where I think you have a power position because NIP couldn't set up the way Kanga could. Through Diamond Space is going to whiff. Nice dodge there as well. Bird saved it, but it couldn't get the big plays. If Alex falls here, he doesn't. He gets a kill, and he makes it out alive. Nice pillow there. Anara relatively Good you know, heal. useless at the moment. She's just sitting on the objective, knowing how close it is to being captured. Evil Eye goes down, but not before he takes down Bonker. Oh, big time. Double kill there. Gara couldn't quite get to him. Alex popping off and Diggy Dog assisting it all. Three to two for Kanga. But NIP capture this last one. They have control and they may be able to tie it up here. This is actually the first time NIP have gone on the offense in this game despite how dominant they've looked. We can take another peek at the damage charts. Going into this round, they were four up and they're still yeah. four up and in the lead. Diggy Dog the off tank for NIP playing the Leon 13 and 6, colossal damage numbers. And it's just something he brings. When you have that kind of um, capability, man, it's just some interesting thing. These these players can just explode at any moment. And you always have to try to keep a lid on them. You're never gonna stop them. I think Kang is just doing the rest to try to say, how can we calm you all down? Confidently pushing around the corner there. Does not quite pay off. One for one trade at the onset. Evil Eye looks for a cheeky shot here, but his team is the ones who step up to the plate. He does a good job just kind of dancing around and not dying. Yeah, 37 health. I mean, it's close. Diggy Dog's a real threat to him. And there's two priorities here. It feels like Tenor and Diggy. Obviously, great players all around, but Diggy seems to be on one today, at least on Leon in this game. And uh, Tenor just brings so much utility with that ultimate. Maybe in it, 
A shout out to that in the spray. Pepper. Running, running, running. Always running. That Always pepper. running. <laughs> That's the way that NAP like to play. They like to play fast. They like to play in your face. That's why you maybe see this little tri triple DPS come out here. Joel very low slain. First to fall in this engagement without an ultimate either. That's just a free pick. And great stuff here. Diggy holding the corner for Alex because he's low, and Alex doing the same thing, adding extra damage for Diggy and allowing him to push. It's been great back and forth teamwork for both of them. Rhino here trying to do it, but Pips actually hitbox isn't big enough to get hit by most of those shots. He slides to the left, finds a value, trying to hold here. Three low members of NIP. Yeah. And because they got Tenor earlier, they can't get that easy reset healing. Bird can't keep them all healthy, so they're going to back off. Rhino's doing a phenomenal job at holding this corner. He's been a very, very difficult block to move. Remaining. And even when he falls back, you know, he kind of had to fall to the barrels, throw up the shield, Nine, get out of combat, eight, regenerate a little bit. Khan can just buy so much six, time five, with that base kit. Four, four three, two, one whoa. goes the clock. Three, NIP have everything at their disposal. Overtime will be something oh. we see, but with the opening kill for yeah. Kanga, this one might go quietly. Got to give credit to Evil Eye there. Just incredible right side control. Doesn't always happen, especially since he's going up against Zen and the uh, Eminence Leon, but the big key for it is that can Evil Eye land his shots? If Zen obviously gets a 950 swing, if an Eminence lands, it's more than 50% of Eevee's health, so it's it's a timing game. It's a, it's a strategy rather really than about being pinpoint accurate. It's a peek and poke proposition, and this time it goes the way of the Winter Witch. Crocs right now having a pretty good game on Cassie. Once Kanga started to get rolls, a rough first round, just a cheeky ultimate that, that bought them that first payload, but they kind of got dominated. Ever since then, though, it's felt a little bit more legitimate from Kanga. These offenses have looked more confident. Obviously, converting one of them lends itself to that storyline. 10 and 5 for Alex, 13 and 7 for Diggy. This happens with 3 DPS. You can be leading in damage, you can be having these insane KDs. But if you can't play the objective as effectively, you're just going to lose the game. And that's going to be a uh, big no-no for Kanga fans because that means they're out. NIP, though, in a very, very good position to maybe try and continue this run. They just captured their first point. What can they do oh, yeah. here? Well, take the point tank down. It's part of it, man. Sometimes that's just the answer. There's nothing really proving itself or opening itself up on this side flank. Put the pressure on Inara. Oh, nice. I like it. Off the roof. Oh. Well done. Evil Eye finds the critical shot. And that was big because the first kill that they got, even though they lost their point tank, that was one of two for Kanga. And NIP, they lost their only. That was the big problem there. And Evil Eye on a five streak. This man popping off. We know he has the potential to play the really with the best and do it better than almost anybody else. Can he continue to do it here? The big overpower coming through. And they Oof. get rid of Tenor. That's big. That's annoying, too. Tenor has not gotten to play this fight. It's felt like a pretty frustrating game for his Pippa character. He's used to just steamrolling oh, people with and huge. more ultimates and more ultimates and more ultimates. Kanga just have the resources to lock down Fish Market. Alex is going to spin through, try and do what he can. But Kanga Esports have just pushed this to a game six. That'll do big. That will do. It's a precarious proposition with one point tank. And it just will not end up working. Fish Market. Oh boy. It ends. The place teams go to win now. The very team that coined it all with a huge game seven loss in the semifinals of Valencia redeemed themselves to go back into the set 2-3 and claim victory. Game six is on the horizon, Nick. But Kanga starting to warm up. Yeah. What does this mean? This, uh, this means a lot for them, right? Now when IP are, are almost second-guessing themselves, they're having the opportunity to really be worried about this. If we lose, even if you lose that first payload on the next map, then you're thinking, oh, my God, if we lose this map, they're going to tie it up 3-3. Yeah. After being up 3-1, it, it's all mental at this point. I think both teams are in the running. All right. Well, let's see if it can happen. Kanga trying to do the dream here. Get a reverse sweep. Let's send him back to the desk, see if they think it can happen. Thanks a lot, Evan. Kanga trying to hop back into this one. And uh, pros, Matt, looking across the way, NIP, they really thought they had this one, but could not hold on. I feel like if you're NIP at this point, you got to be frustrated because the beginning of the, the split for them was like four O's and four ones across the board. And now for two days straight, I mean, still another game to go. This could be a 4-2. But other teams are starting to play them to the brink. And I, I, I yeah. think it's not so much NIP playing poorly, 
But I think now we've seen everyone else in the league start to catch up just a little bit. They're still the team to beat. Don't get me wrong. They're, they're still at the top. They still only have one loss. Still an incredible team. But everyone else in the league is starting to really form and adapt into this meta. And despite all of the damage being in NIP's favor this time around, Kang had just played a more calculated, objective-based game, really. NIP goes into this game thinking, all right, we'll just kill you over and over and over and over again, and we'll stand on the point while we do it. Kang is say, all right, well, we'll deal with a few deaths here and there, but, you know, we'll get a few, we'll get some point time here, we'll get some point time here, we'll lose all of the initial engagements but then we're gonna win the single one engagement that counts and then win the point off of the back of that evil eye. Finally having a great game in the set has been consistently good throughout the day, but this one he finally had a map where he was really able to flex his wings a little bit and uh, and he, he really played a critical role, I would say, in Kanga's victory this time around. This was absolutely the evil eye Eevee map that I think Kanga fans have been kind of looking for and waiting for. Finally, it comes through in the clutch. And like you said, I think the, the, the takeaway here from Nip, win or lose, is that teams are a little bit closer to what they've been doing. Yeah. And I think there's a number of reasons for that. One, like you said, we there has just been time for the other teams to improve. Yeah. We've seen more of NIP. We know more of what they're going to bring to the table and how they play. Right. So more footage to really study off of and, and find the holes in the armor. More time to actually get better in and of yourself. And even the ones that we've seen NIP win lately, they yeah. have been, like you said, being brought to the brink or, or dropping a couple of maps here and there, whereas once upon a time, 4-0s, 4-0s, 4-0s. This time, only one 4-0, 4-2, 4-3, and two losses. And that brings us to Serpent Beach, still one game away from taking the set, but Kanga fighting back. And I think Serpent Beach bodes to a pretty similar draft to what we... It's almost like a, a fish market combined with like a Jaguar Falls in a way. I mean, so many of the same champions work on both of those maps. I think Eevee's going to be an important pick here. I would like it to go over to Kanga if, if I'm talking about where it would make the most impact. I think I think Evil Eye having the Eevee is more important than, than Bittner or Alex having the Eevee on the opposite side. Always playing around with this last band. It's going to be the Tour Vault again. I think that's smart. We know what happens when you give <laughs> NIP the Tour Vault Warm here. So first four, first four picks in bands, uh, or first four bands, I should say. Not necessarily surprising to me. All of them frontliners, though, notably, which leaves Ash off of the board, answering back, likely with a Barrack, and, and that's the EV I was looking for. Barrack, the Inara will be available here for NIP. Kanga... Going to go for the EV one more time. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Mm -hmm. And the second cliche I'm going to lead with, feed the hot hand. Evil Eye worked out perfectly last game. That's what you look for out of the EV play. Looking for the Kanga one more time. We'll see if this one works Tell out. And across the way, the barrack locked in as well. So I like this choice. Yep. Um, and NIP are going to have to respond to it. So high mobility yep. and great oh, well. point tank potential. I agree. I mean, there's only so much you can really read into kind of the ash barrack mashup because they both basically fill the same role where you're able to, to hang out on the point, take in a lot of damage because they're frontliners, but both of them are very good at bullying out on the opposite side as well. So whether it's Joel's, I, I would assume it's going to be Joel's on the barrack. He, he really enjoys that champion. I assume, well, it's not safe to assume, Bonker or Diggy Dog can really play the ash as well. It's unsafe. But, but this is where the... Uh, this is where the draft, I think, opens up for the NIP side because you already have Eevee off the board. So NIP can probably see sort of the semblance of what Kanga are starting to go for. You know, Kanga across the board throughout the day have been okay just to do the standard Barrack, Inara, Eevee, you know, nice. Chronics on a Tyra or something like that. Kanga aren't necessarily the ones to I throw something to crazy the out there. The sure. Taking away the Inara, though, Makes Kanga a little bit more uncomfortable if we look at the the remaining frontliners. I mean, I was thinking about that, but Barrack, I mean, Barrack and Inara are two very similar tanks. True. So going in the other, you you're leaving. That's where, the Inara, that's where you're left. Yeah, yeah, you gotta go. Fernando, we'll see if he goes that he, way. He has he has some uh, some viability on this. I mean, in general, he's just Sunday he's not a bad champ. I, I love to, to to rag on Fernando, but he's not a this bad champion team. by any means. It the immortal, like team, if you hit a good immortal, 
can change a team sure. fight entirely around. You know, he has the shield. He has, you know, the dash. I mean, he, he he's a very he's a basic champion, but can can really change things around if you play him well. So. That's what Kangar are left with. I don't think they're thrilled about getting Fernando. Yeah. But I think getting the Barrack and EV 1 2 were so important to them that they're going to be okay with the fact that Fernando falls to them at 4. Not like they're being forced into a, you know, a terminus or, or anything else like that. So I, I think they'll, they'll be okay. Dombo, a good amount of supplemental healing as well. Uh, but NIP with the last two picks here could mix things up. Maybe Maeve. Maybe another Pip. Grow Pip has one. some, Grow. you know, merit on a map like this. Uh, Drogos as well could be an answer, but they don't really play Drogos. I think Grover's good because the I the way his healing circle down. works. Okay, all I right. Bring destruction to yours. So this is likely Luminary Genos, Ferocity, Grover for Bittner. The question is, did Kanga have an answer for it? Because those long range axes, they'll give you a wallop if you catch one. Tyra being thought of here by Kanga. Maybe being locked in. <laughs> the the damage amp is good though on the Kanga side to, to counter out whatever whatever it is that Genos is bringing, which is the the damage amp. So I think Kanga would be would be smart to lock this one in. Chronix is is very good um, on on the Tyra as well. And then what that what that brings to the table is exactly what we saw the last time we saw Chronix on this champion. I think it was Frozen Guard. When they, when they stopped the bleeding a little bit, one Frozen Guard and Chronix had, I think it was a Quadra kill at the end of that game when the Crossfire came through onto a pretty similar lineup. Ash, Anara, they're going to be very good targets Here's for that Crossfire, word, very good them, targets for the Hunting Party. So what Kango will look to do is, is set up some pins for Evil Eye with the Hunting Party, some supplemental damage coming in from the Barrack. Tyra does a lot of damage as well, but then, but then let Evil Eye go in, knock down those pins, Whereas NIP, they're going to look to utilize the range of that Grover, the damage amp as well, on top of the Ferocity. It's all going to come down to whether Bittner can hit those long-range axes. And it's come down to that before. Can Bittner hit the shots? And earlier in the day, he absolutely could. So if Ninjas in Pajamas are having to lean on their DPS, I don't think that's a surprise. That's okay. Something that they're not used to and something that is absolutely uh, can, can bring the win. Kanga on the other side. Some interesting choices yep. there. I think if, if you look at both lineups, top to bottom, they both have different drafts, but good drafts. I still think NIP have the edge with a little bit of spice. We'll see if they do. Evan, Nick, do it to it. Well, Serpent Beach, it's a map that I love to watch, and it's unfortunately been a map that we haven't been able to see yeah. very often. It has definitely fallen off in the, in the later half of the split. For what reason, I, I can't say for sure, to be honest. Here's the talent screen. Ferocity, Grover, Luminary, Genos. Dave hit the nail on the head. Impulse, Cassie as well. That's an interesting one to note because it can kind of go either way. Everything else pretty much standard, pretty much set in stone. 55% of your maximum health over three seconds when you fall below 40% of your max health. Formidable Fernando. One thing that we don't necessarily talk a ton about because he's not really the pick of the litter. He's something that kind of comes through if you gotta. Not terrible, has one of the better ultimates I think in the game, period. And something you need to play around well is that formidable cooldown. It's going to be interesting here also, Nick, to look at how these cripples, like you just saw, can impact a kill, especially on the Evil Eye. Winter Witch does well on Serpent Beach, but not when she can't fly. No, definitely not. Goes in the ice block to try and cleanse that cripple, but coming back out, it's just too much damage. Nice wall there from yeah, Bonker. Good decision. Very preemptive. And then he puts himself in his warder's field. I mean, Bonker has been really, really something special today on the Inara. Oh, hello. Very, very, Ooh. you know, well thought out because that's what you have to do as the front line. It's not mechanically difficult per se, but you have to position and rotate through cooldowns very, very smartly. And what's interesting, Nick, is again, I just want to point out, the way NIP win point fights, you don't get a second chance at it. Now, they never really got into the point, essentially, but they're all so aggressive and they all take such advanced positions and they really isolate Bird by himself. And, 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 but they're okay with that because they're doing it together. And it's just the strength in numbers and the strength in the cohesion of the game plan. And that's what we've seen NIP be so good at, Kanga sometimes struggle at. But right here, it's working great for the Ninjas. Bonker and Grover getting in there. These boys are diving and 
deep. There's the first Whirl into the game. A lot of damage being done, a lot of healing coming oh. out, and it's a trade. Support for support. And good shots here. These are crucial from Evil Eye to really double. shut down Bonker and his impact. Alex, though, finding a double kill. This is not what you want, and oh my god, Alex is kind of going off here. Dicky Dog back onto the Ash, and so you know what impact he's going to have on there. But man, Alex's uh, seven streak probably hasn't died at all yet this game. Oof. Big combo there. You can see just oh. the one two punch. It's one more would have done it. Oh, that axe just barely off the mark. But that was about 900 damage and a cripple. That is just terrible for Evie. Half her health yeah. and her mobility has gone. Very difficult to deal with. Now Alex is relatively uncontested in the back line here, and he's free to poke away. It just works so well. And you're right. This is a tough angle. Bear shifty enough to where he can avoid a lot of these bullets, but he can't just focus on you. He's got to focus on so many other things. The general's just making a bad problem oh, worse. Geez. And this is where you see teams, it feels like just they get run over so quickly. No ultimates really able to be charged and used effectively, so it's 2-0 before they can blink. Not a map that we play very often anymore, and it's one that when it was played, NIP did do this to people. They yeah. ran you over. And Serpent Beach is really not even one of those maps that you're used to seeing it on. Typically, you expect it on the literally geographically smaller ones, like Frogs, sure. Jags, Bright Marshes. Serpent has never really been one of those, especially when you consider it's one of the most polarizing, you know, high ground control maps. If you don't got it, this map becomes very difficult for you. And while you don't necessarily consider Nara in that conversation, Bonker, you know, God bless him. He was up there getting, uh, really getting in the back line, mixing it up with Kanga Esports. A lot of killless members on that squad. 2-0 start. One that could quickly turn 4-0 unless Kanga find an opening break. But so many big shots already off the bat. And what I love about the DPS, Alex and Tenor. Whenever they get a chance and people hide behind, they get some early poke, they go straight to the point. Come back, yes. fight the court, fight the objective, and then yeah. go back to the main damage dealer. Really, really good target swap, and you're right. Gets the dome shield out, changes targets, dome shields down, back to Varric. Here we go, what a wall from Bonker. It cuts off the crossfire, and all of the pressure from Kanga dies in an instant. And they just can't stay with him. Evil Eye doing his best, but you know, the way that they can get out of these fights, and Diggy back on the Ash, 11 streak for him, 12 streak for Alex. Have they not died all game? Oh my goodness. I don't think Alex has. Definitely Alex. Is An 11 streak, very, it feels very safe. Let's see the KDAs, what that means as well. So, they haven't. None of them. Diggy, Alex, and Bird all deathless, 69% in climbing. Diggy's close to an ultimate, and if they're still grouped up there when he gets it, this is bad news bears for Kanga Esports. Oh boy, oh boy, 90%. Needs a few more, misses that one. Indirect shots, he's getting low. He's got the battering ram as well, he's gonna have it. Shoulder He'll be badger. fine, shoulder back, yeah. up, and down. Slams the flag into the ground, says, what up to Nando? I'm the one wearing the armor here. Go back home and brush off the iron <laughs> breastplates. Because it's Ash's turn to party, and she is in full control. Wow, perfectly. I mean, literally Woo! couldn't have been a second later. I think he had like 150 HP left in the tank. Diggy Dog, calculated or not, it works out for the boy from down under as he plants another flag in the hearts of his old teammates here, going up 3-0 to zero NIP in a perfect position to close this one out in six. And the boy from down under goes right over the top to slam it down and almost stake NIP's claim to win this set and continue with only one loss on the season. Kanga stood strong. They stood tall for quite a few maps, bouncing back and making this much more interesting than people might have thought after the first couple of games. But it seems like all of that momentum has faded away. As I say that, Evil Eye hits a couple of big shots trying to quell what the onslaught has been from the ninjas. Yeah, a little hunting party, two for 1,000 damage. He'll take that. He'll oh. take that every day of the week. Trying so to good. shut down Alex. But it's tough, man. He's the only one that can get here, but yet Cassie has impulse. He has the yeah. real hard counter build. Man. You're seeing that burst oh. damage. Tenor's kind of been on Evil Eye's case, too, which is making things that much easier for Alex to deal with. And honestly, give credit, because he was hitting 680s, and then he got that Astral Mark, and then uh, he hit 782 to clean up the rest of the health pool. It's still a deathless round from a lot of NIP. Tenor finds a kill on Najera. Bonker dies, but he's already died. It's Diggy, Alex, and Bird trying to finish this off with a 4-0 without dying. Kanga, you can't let him do it to you. Oh, Chronix is on the low ground, trapped positioning, starting to fall apart a little bit. Alex is committed here. He, he's going to die or win the game right here, right now. Evil Eye's behind him. He doesn't uh -oh. know which way he wants to look. Dodge this roll. is getting tense. He got out, he got out, but Joel cleans up Alex, so that's at least one. 
He's not going 10-0-11 to seal the deal. Evil Eye finally finding Tenor, but wow. it's still Bird. It's still Diggy. The Ash makes it out. Evil Eye on the chase, but he's going to back off. And Joel with that high-value killing blow back to 56% on the Dome Shield already. Yeah, that's already. big. That's cute. That's really, really one of the lesser-known mechanics. Based on your literal killing blow streak, you'll get bonus ultimate charge for taking that player down and ending their life. Joel gets the money shot there, and he will get a lot of ultimate for it. 25 seconds left, and IP finally have to stall. They've lost their Cassie for the first time in seven minutes. And Chronic's trying to hold this high ground. Firebomb, crucial how you use it here. You don't want to let uh -oh. the Inara shrug it off. And it might just be that's the case. She goes the other way, but Diggy, meanwhile, pushing the payload. They've got two problems. Why, why is it Ash pushing the payload now and Inara being the aggro tank? I don't know. NIP hard to read, but that's what makes them so good. Joel spinning around on the objective. Oh, this one's getting messy. Alex is dead. Diggy is dead. NIP are in trouble. Is Burr going to go for it? I don't think he's going to make it out in time. He's not going to get the chance. Kanga will find kills. They will end all of Boy. the deathless streaks. And they will get their first point on Serpent Beach. That was a lot of VFX in Bird's face there. Not a lot, <laughs> not a lot to read from that poor Fernando Lance. He was like, at least it's not Dragonfire Lance though. True, because that's that was a dark time. That's a uh, that's deadly. Okay, that's what I don't want to see. A Dragonfire Lance Fernando. It's just the stuff of nightmares, man. Your audio mix gone. Your vision gone. Your life bar. Still there. <laughs> Fully and wholly <laughs> Fully intact. and wholly intact. But what type of existence are you leading at that point? At, at that point, you just jump off the map, say it's not worth it. You're it's not worth vegetable. it. You can't see, you can't hear, you're just existing. Yeah. And when they took that out, they said, well, we've got to then have another dragon replace it. And thus, Imani was created. <laughs> totally there kidding. Was. Garrett's like, that's not how I thought of that champion. To the back line once more, though. Diggy Dog trying to get aggressive. He's got the flag. He plants uh -oh. it subpar in terms of stun positioning, but he does stay alive at the end of the day. And they found everything they need in this. Bird loving the through time and space, not for any reason that he got kills or dominated the team fight, but just for the simple fact that he is adding to the ease of execution that NIP have to go through. They are not worried about anything else. And then that through time and space comes through. They've got to worry about that. Now they've got to worry about another DPS diving. Can they even touch her? And he's got a plan. Seismic crash into the ice block. Great counter there by Evil Eye. I don't mind it. Resilience is online at this part of the game. Go for that highlight play every once in a while. Evil Eye, he has just been kept in check by this Grover. And he had to use one of his most crucial CCs there, Nick. I don't think this is going to go the way of Kanga anymore. It's going to be a NIP who find the victory today and take it in overtime. 4-2 to two and 4-1 to one in the game. They're going to pound it out. And Bogger and Nax are going to get denied there. Oh, no. You know, because as tenor, when you set the the precedent of this is a fist bump, and then and he holds like, no, his hand we're out. dapping it up. He says, "Yeah." He's like, "I was here first, okay? We're Absolutely. doing what I want to do." Absolutely. Tenor's rightful to smack. You're that supposed hand away. to hold, and then the person can then adjust, especially if they get it wrong, because then then they switch, then you switch, and then you're like, "Oh, we got it wrong again." Somebody's got to hold. And before you know it, you've got a real situation on your hands. Yeah. Diggy smiles get as he back. hugs a lot of his old teammates. Tenor as well, shaking hands. Long time <laughs> rivals there. D69 Garrett's not Marito having days. It. Yeah, this guy's all good friends at the end of the day. Though. That was a good set from Kanga. I think they, they definitely warmed up and, and gave us a little something there. In the early couple of games, I wasn't quite so sure what we were going to get from the boys in orange and black. Well, you know what we're going to get from the boys in black and gold. NIP continuously dominant throughout this league, and they are now two wins higher almost in a 13-1 position to finish out their 14-game run of the first split of the PPL on land. Pretty impressive stuff for them. Uh, yeah. An unprecedented thing to see in the land situation. So congrats to all of them. We'll hear from them in a moment, but let's send it back to the desk first to break it down. NIP up on top in this game, NIP up on top in the standings, and all is as it should be in the world of the Paladins, Paladins Premier League. <laughs> Thanks for laughing That's at right. me. We appreciate it. You chuckled? You, you opened the door for me to walk through. <laughs> teammates on the desk talking about teammates on the field. That's Kanga right. Esports having a great time and doing great work 
what it felt like up until this last moment, and this is generally how NIP matches go, I feel like, yeah. where you'll see, if, if they're not outright dominating, the enemy team sort of gets to fight back, and it's very, very rough and tumble <laughs> until that last game, and then NIP just goes, you know what, we feel like winning, and then they win it. Yeah, that's really what it is, is, you know, I think Kanga in, in NIP's eyes, they, they hung around just a little bit too long, yeah. and they wanted to be over with the set. <laughs> I, I imagine that's a lot of the sentiment that goes on. Alex 12-2, and two, Bittner 9-3 and three this time around. And, you know, pregame I said, all right, this one kind of comes down to, to Bittner needing to hit his shots, and, and he did. 9-3 and three is crazy, especially on Ferocity Grover. He, he, he loves himself some off support. But there were moments where there was kind of a void to be filled, where, where the shot, the axes maybe were going wider, or Bittner, you know, falls early on into a fight, and Alex takes up that mantle, and that's that's what you have to look at with NIP, is that, you know, you say Bittner, 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 Bittner. I mean, we, we, we say it so much, but but if there is this sort of situation where Bittner's not at the top of his game, Alex is so tried and true. Alex is always, you know, a good baseline of, of performing, as we touched on pregame. And that's what we saw there, where, where Bittner didn't have like a, a standout MVP performance, but Alex picked up right where the slack was, took the rest of the game home, and, and NIP, I, I think you were right. Once they lost a couple, they were like, all right, let's just get this win, let's get out of here. <laughs> a dozen for the Ninjas in pajamas, only a single loss. Navi, Space Station, and NV tied up there at eight. You see the middle of the pack squads there, VP leading that. And then the unfortunate situations that are Pittsburgh and Renegades, very mm -hmm. unfortunately. So Navi still up there on top in a <clears throat> 34 <laughs> plus minus for Nip. The closest neighbor is Navi at 16. So dominant they have been over the entirety of the first phase of the Pal. Pa pa I'm just not going to get it. The Paladins it. Premier League. There it is. You got it that time when you you slow down, you enunciate I, things, uh, things strike well. But what I do look at in those standings, honestly, is the games next week now become so much more important as far as standings go. NIP, they're locked in. They're up top. I think bottom two, as far as MSI goes, I should say. Sure. The, I think five and six are pretty much locked in, three and four. But but there are still a couple teams right up there towards the top that you know map differential – is going Space Station's way, but, you know, Navi still might have a game to play. I mean, there, there's still some things that could shift around standing-wise going into MSI. So this week didn't didn't seal everything up, but but there's still some, some storylines to be explored. Well, it's been a blast of fun here in week number 12. One more week before we take break here for the midseason Invitational. For myself and Dawson, who won't – don't show him. He's over there. No. Well, I've thanks. enjoyed it. <laughs> we gave him his moment. It's Nip's moment, though. Thanks for watching. We're going to toss it over to an interview with some of the standout members of Ninjas in Pajamas. Some of the standout members of Ninjas in Pajamas still waiting for them to arrive and sit down. <laughs> but I guess we've got Bonker and Tenor in the meantime. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you had a good game and a great set. Things started to slip away in the middle part of it, but overall it was a fantastic showcase of your resilience and effort. How do you feel coming off of that win? I feel good. We've kind of been on a slope lately, and today we took a pretty convincing win, I'd say, considering our performance. So I'm, gl I'm glad. Walker, one of the things I love um, about you is that you're always kind of thinking about that back cap, sometimes to the chagrin of your teammates, maybe a little bit too much about the back cap, but always being able to transition to like a payload. I, you know, you played very, very well on the Inar today. You were very happy with your play. So something I posted to Diggy Dog yesterday, what's the one thing you did in this set that you're most proud of? And then maybe one mistake that you uh, that you didn't like. Uh, I would say that I held W very good this set <laughs> uh, for Illo, uh, and that I the mistake I did was on Barrick on Fish Market. I died when they they were it was three two in the set, and we got to pick on Inara, and then I died on point in Aivult for nothing. Gotcha. I mean, bizarre. That was one game yesterday. That was an absolute slobber knocker. Again, you get you get another really really close one on, on bizarre. What is it about this map that you think lends itself to these difficult situations? Is it tough to push on this map? Is that really what it comes down to? It's very small choke points to break. So defenders has a, <clears throat> how can I say it, a great advantage, I guess. So it's going to be long games on that map.
Gotcha. Well, guys, congratulations. This is another great set from you guys. Another win in the W column. Not many more for you guys to we go. We should have won Frozen, by the way. There it is. Should have won Frozen. Woulda, coulda, shoulda, but it's a W all the same. Congrats, guys. That does it for the PPL here today. We will see you all next week. Thank you so much for joining us. And have a great weekend. Ciao, ciao. Elvin's premiere brought to you by Evil Mojo, High Res Studios, iNap, Respawn, Steel Series, Alienware, and Skillshot.